This is Sinister Cinema, and tonight we're going to be discussing a couple, uh, couple uh, movies and uh, having a couple drinks. What do we got here? Some margaritas, homemade margaritas. I don't care for margaritas. I oh, know. Even though I'm Mexican. That's what I not, actually chose margaritas. Not my thing. Because I stereotyped you as wanting. I despise margaritas. That's weird. I, I can't do it, and I love. Margaritas are lemon, right? Lemon. Lime. Lime, yeah, and I love limes and lemon. We, we just do like a simple two on one. Two tequilas, one lime, one sugar. But I do love me some Deep Eddies. That's, that's like a white girl drink. I don't care. <laughs> Call me a white girl then. But I am going to drink a margarita anyway. So. I mean, we could have a shot if you want. Uh-uh. Not yet. Not right now. It's tequila. I thought Maybe. you liked. Once I get drink this terrible <laughs> drink, not that because you made it, it's 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 a good drink. It's just I don't like like I said margaritas. Is anybody in the chat? I don't see anybody. This is sad. We're just drinking alone. I don't know. Story of my life. On set. We so both... I I didn't I didn't watch the movie. Yeah, we were going to be watching... Uh, I didn't watch the movie, I'm sorry. What were we going to be watching? We were going to be VHS watching... VHS 94 or 96? Yeah, VHS 94. I didn't watch Which it. is the 94th VHS. What? It finally passed up Friday the 13th. Because Friday the 13th is on 93. What do you mean? Friday the 13th, 93. Like, Friday the 13th, 3, Jason Lives. Friday the 13th, 5, Final Chapter. This is the 94th no, what's VHS, it? yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> number 94. Okay. No. Well, anyway, I didn't watch it, so Doug's going to go ahead and explain. It's going to be major spoilers for me. Yeah, this whole thing is a spoiler. I'm just going to like tell him the story of the show, of the movie, which has happened before. We One time, Carlos got really upset because some people were talking in a movie theater uh, during Invisible Man. And that was terrible. He just went and sat in the lobby. He said, I'm going to the bathroom. And he never, never came, came back. back. Never came back. And I was just like, So I just oh, went man. into the lobby of the Alamo Draft House and sat at the bar and drank my sorrows away. But not margaritas. He did not drink margaritas. Oh my God. Um, that freaked me out. I thought that was somebody saying that. But. So, um, VHS 94, it's just another, uh, there's a couple VHSs out now. They've all been pretty good. Um, Bloody Disgusting does them, so that's pretty cool. Uh, they do, uh... Do they? I didn't know that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, they're, they're one of the, I guess, producers. I don't know. I didn't look anything up on IMDb or anything, but, but they're, I, I assume they're one of the producers on it. Um, but, so, and then... And then Radio Silence was the other other team involved who did Ready or Not, Southbound. Um, Ready or Not, it's a good movie. Yeah, Scream Five. They, you haven't they seen produced it. You Scream Five. It. That's I did yeah. not expect that. It was yeah, great. those guys are doing some good stuff, and I think they're uh, kind of getting more. They're they're going to get bigger and bigger. I think got some good stuff coming up. Uh, no, not 1942 margaritas. I, I think they're just, uh, probably, um, Milagro? Yeah, Milagro. Milagro silver margaritas. The 1942 is just a little bit too, uh, too nice to be turning making, into a margarita. Making shit drinks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, I'm sorry. uh. I'm sorry. Um, so I don't know if anyone's seen this, uh, movie or not. VHS 94, as it says in the title right here. But uh, but I'm about to explain the whole thing the same way me and Lyric did to uh, to you. For Invisible Man. Invisible Man, yeah. So, it's an anthology. It's got uh, five or six different parts in it. Um, it starts out with, uh, with the kind of, I guess... I don't know what you would call it. It's one of the ones that's like, wow. 
It's one of the ones that's in between. Uh, to kill that taste. It, it, it open. Ah. It's the opener, and then it's the epilogue, and then it, uh, it's kind of in between all the other ones, or I think most of them. And that one's called Holy Hell, um, written by Jennifer Reeder, who I looked her up. I did not know anything she did, but she's done like 20 shorts, just tons of shorts. Um, and I'm just going to go right off the top of my head. This was the worst one out of all of them like i the writing was just terrible i thought I mean, sounded, the story was kind of the terrible title sounds good yeah so it that it's like a swat team who rolls up to this house that's like uh or this warehouse that's like uh oh we're gonna go it's like they seem like there's somebody od and there's some weird gel on them and and uh i kind of thought the gel might work its way into all the different uh video uh, all the different segments but it didn't um so they go in they start seeing all these people in front of tvs with their eyes gouged out and you're just like uh, okay this is weird and it's uh you know uh in the background they're talking about like this new thing the internet because it was 1994 which anyone who's as old as us remembers when the internet was first starting it was just a bunch of chat rooms and people catfishing you through text oh, there were no pictures rooms. Good but they were like, rooms. I look good. Come meet up with me. And no. I remember no. Those. I had it. We used to call it importing. If, like, you got a girl to come, like, you oh, hey, her? you live in Oklahoma? Like, come on down to San Antonio. Let's, uh, let's hang out. We called it importing. We'd be like, oh, man, you're importing her with no pictures. Oof. It's rough sometimes. Whew. Yeah, it was rough. Um, so uh back to the story they go in they're running around this was the worst story to me i'm i'm uh they're they're looking for some they don't know if it's they don't know what's going on they just see these people with like their eyes gouged out and they're running around swat team um i think uh and then there's this guy slater who's on the radio who's like just screaming the what slater. the hell are you doing in there if you can't like just completely just like dogging these women that are on the other team um and it's really weird i'm just like that would never happen like the way it, it just was written really bad i thought um it was just like i don't know it just it just wasn't good but anyways that one's really really short so it's just like between the segments it's showing them clearing rooms and all this stuff and then all of a sudden at the very very end uh that the Slater guy is like tied up in a chair and he's coming to and he's like, what's going on? And the two women are like, there's no drugs. We make snuff films and we have an audience. And they're like, this is going to be our best one ever. <laughs> and it's just like fucking dumb. <laughs> it's just stupid. Like the whole, that was like the dumbest story, like out of everything on there, dumbest thing. Um, then it goes into, I didn't, I didn't like that one, but it's like, I saw it. Yeah. Through your eyes. Oh, dude, it was bad. It was bad. Um, <laughs> sorry, Jennifer. I'm going to watch some of your other stuff, and maybe I'll like it. But, you know, I get it. It was like a cheesy kind of thing, and I just didn't like it. Um, the The next thing it goes into, I think the next thing is the commercial, um, Veggie Masher. And it just goes into this, <laughs> this awesome, have you ever wanted your veggies? And it's just like this pneumatic thing and they're just putting veggies in there and it's just mashing them and it's like into a paste. It's literally like a little commercial and it's just, you know, a little fake infomercial that used to happen a lot in the nineties when people watched regular TV. And, um, it, it's, it's, uh, just blasting the, you know, it's just kind of funny, just like a funny little segment. Um, but what was weird is I saw that, uh, the guy who did that one, and I think he was the actor in it too, is the guy who wrote uh, Psycho Gorman, or directed Psycho Gorman and directed uh, The Void. So that was kind of cool. I was like, that's wow, that's cool. cool. Like, the Psycho Gorman guy, because that's a, that movie's like super weird and people hate on it or they love it, but it's, uh, I loved it, you know. Um, the next... The next one, which I think is my favorite one, um, was the Storm Drain episode. And it starts out with, um, you know, you know, the elf in the tree, you know, 
I saw the elf in the tree. And they're like oh, doing yeah, the dumb yeah, drawings yeah. and stuff. Like, here's a person's sketch of it. So it was kind of based like on that kind of thing. Um, and it's this reporter. She's going around. Uh, also, before I go too far, all of the actors are very uh, not, not super... Um, but there's no like huge well-known actors in it. It's every everything is is pretty new, which is pretty cool because like there's a lot of good stuff in it, um, a lot of good writing, uh, a lot of good directing and and acting. Um, the the uh, uh, storm drain episode. There's a a woman who is a reporter and she's standing there and they're talking to all these people and they're like, uh, oh, I saw Rat Man. Ratman, he lives in the sewers. Oh, and then they're like interviewing. I was standing right here, and Ratman came right out of the sewer. And like, th there was one funny part. Like she's, you know, it's kind of like on on the guy, and he goes, "Can you show me where where uh, you saw him?" And he like turns and points like an AR-15, like at the at the sewer. And he goes right over there, and they're like, oh, "Let's get out of here." You know, that was pretty funny. And then they go and they're standing in front of the sewer to do the film clip and. They walk out, and she gets on the phone, uh, and is uh, it's 1994, so it's one of those corded phones that go into the dash of the van, and and she's like, I still she's like, those. what do you mean? I he wants me to get in the sewer, and she's like, kind of talking back, but then you can tell like she's getting reamed, so she's like, ah, okay. So then they um, go and they're kind of standing in the in the storm storm uh, drain, and the guy was like. The guy who's filming is like, what's that behind her? And you kind of expect something. Uh, and they go walk up in there. It's like kind of like a homeless. Uh, it's like a a um, sleeping bag with some stuff in it, teddy bear and some stuff. And they're like, oh, you think people live here? And and she makes the argument we should go and try to find them. And he's like, oh, you're just trying to get your Pulitzer, you know. And and you know, she's just like, no, I want to help, you know. And so they go for, further into the sewer, and then there's like, they get to a corner, and she's standing there, and she's looking, and there's like a tent, and they're looking at the tent, and something scares them, and then they turn, and there's this like old man standing there, and he's kind of like, just covered in like, grease and dirt and whatever, and she's trying to talk to him, and she says, um, you know, I think she thinks... You know, maybe that's who people are seeing is this guy. So she says, are you Ratman? And he he turns and he looks up and he's like, Ratman. <laughs> and like this black stuff just starts coming out of his mouth. And they're like, oh, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. So they start running. The, and it's from the camera the guy's perspective. And all this is like found footage, VHS, shot really, really cool. Um, I did look up how they did that. Uh and and so it's like camera running, and he stops, and he turns around, and I can't remember what the character's name is, but he turns around and yells for Holly, maybe I think I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna use Holly. So he's like Holly. So he goes back to try to get her, and gets knocked out. So um, comes to, uh, and it's this whole uh, it's this whole like bunch of people down in the sewer. And Chud. they're scared, and it wasn't Chud, but I mean, kind of Chud. It was kind of Chuddy. Um, and they uh, they're talking to him about Ratman, and and they're just like Ratma, and they're like Hell Ratma, you know. Or I think eh, that might come a little later. But they're standing. You, you're kind of watching through the camera, like one of the homeless guys, one of the guys living in the sewer, has the camera. And he kind of looks into this drain that comes into the clearing where they are, and you see this like creature in there, and and the guy's like, "No, come forward, get the light off of him," because the thing is, if light hits him, he runs away. Like, come on, come on. And so he comes to the edge, and they get the cameraman, they hold him there, and and uh, rat rat man goes like just pukes this black shit all over him, and his face just starts like melting off. And they like, you know, falls to the side and the lady's screaming and they get her up there and they're like, he was not worthy. Maybe you will be worthy. And, and then it shows him just like drooling the stuff all over her face. And then it cuts over to the newsroom. It looked a lot like how we look and it, but you don't see her. You just see uh, the news anchor and he's like, 
harrowing footage of, you know, ho our own Holly being, you know, rescued out of the sewer. And then it said, like, that her cameraman's still missing. So she's sitting there and she's talking and, and she's just, like, you know, talking and throwing the word Ratma into, like, the sentences just randomly. And uh, and the guy kind of looks at her and she just turns and she, like, goes, Bleh! and, like, this black shit goes all over his face. And this is one of the best parts. He's like, ah, grabs his face and like rips the whole, his whole face just starts like melting off and it's ripping off. And she just like turns and like, in other news, blah, 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 blah. You know, she has this little black stuff coming down her mouth and she's, and at the end she just goes, hell, Ratma. And that was the end of that one. And that's, that one, that's good. That's that one good. was, that one was, that one was probably my favorite one overall um, as far as like, uh, just kind of everything about it. the story uh, was shot really well um, all this stuff it had a cool uh, they're they're randomly interviewing people um, one of the people that I interviewed I thought was kind of cool like it was like these two skateboarders and one of them was wearing like the body count shirt you know with like the the big buff guy with the little oh, bandana yeah. and I just like randomly noticed that because I was like oh shit body count I remember whenever I went to see body count it Lollapalooza or something in 1993 so you know very good to the era um and then the next one do you have any questions so far no it's like i'm watching the goddamn yeah, movie you your are eyes. we're actually watching the movie right you're, here i'm just explaining it as it goes you are just iPad. amazing at improvis improvisation Impro yeah improvisation improvisation yeah um, the next one was uh improvisation was called uh empty wake i believe empty wake and that one was weird to me because I guess I didn't understand what a wake was. You didn't understand what a wake was? I thought the wake was when, like, Irish people, I'm of Irish heritage, so I can say this, just went and got fucking wasted and, like, party you around are, a dead body. You Ooh, are Irish. Yeah, fuck yeah, me and Conan O'Brien dancing around a dead body. Like, I thought that's what it was. But apparently, a wake, I actually looked it up, is, like, Keeping vigil over the body for and from the time of death until the so empty, em, evil spirits the fuck don't come and possess okay. the body. Come well, on, Doug. Well, fuck. I know there's that in multiple cultures, but I didn't. I didn't. It's realize. really big in the Jewish culture. Yeah, it is. They there's cover actually the body. a whole, whole horror yes, movie about that. Yes, I need to too. watch that. The, yeah, vigil. the vigil. I want to yeah. watch it. It looks really. We good. We should watch it. We're so, gonna watch it. Anyways, this lady who's new, she works at a funeral home, um, and. She's the the person who's there while the family's supposed to be coming, but there's some crazy ass storm and whatever. So she's there and she's like gonna uh, be greeting the family as they come. Well, the the funeral director or the mortician, whoever is leaving her there, like says, "Here's my phone number." But he's also, you know, kind of making fun of the guy and saying like, "Oh, it's a closed casket because there's not much left of him," and. Um, and so she's there and like this weird stuff's happening like the casket's crooked and there's like some knocking on the casket and From she's the just, inside? Mm -hmm. and so she's there alone there's this huge storm coming no one showed up and then like one and she calls her friend she's like can you look up uh, this guy and see like does he have family or what you know what the deal is look up the obituaries in the <clears> paper so this one guy comes and he uh, goes in and he just like says some stuff and turns around and leaves, you know, thanks her and leaves. And it's like, there's a clock in the background <laughs> and this is where I got confused. So I'm like, it's like midnight. What's going on? Like, when's the party start? Like, you should, you, the party's got to be over by two. So I don't know. So um, then I learned what a wake was. Uh, so this guy leaves and then... Uh, her friend calls her back and says, uh, says, I didn't have to look very far. He's on the front page. He's the one that jumped off the roof of a church, I think a church, um, last week. And I guess he was acting all weird and whatever. And as soon as his family, and he was talking to somebody, as soon as his family showed up, he jumped off the roof and killed himself. I think that's what the story was. And, uh, so then he, he, uh, the guy leaves and all the power goes out. 
And you of hear course. crazy knocking, loud noise. The girl freaks out. Um, she runs to the front uh, to try to get out, and the door has been chained shut. So I guess the guy had changed the door shut. She goes back into the chapel, and the casket's like all over, um, leaned up, and there's like blood where the head and stuff was, and there's no nothing in it. So she's like looking around, and then she sees the guy, and he's just like l- turned away from the camera against the wall, looking at the wall, and she's like, you know, Mr. Whatever, uh, there's been a terrible mistake, you know? And the guy turns all quick, and he's missing, like, half of his head. Like, right here, it's just, like, gone. And he's, like, tries to start coming towards her, and she's she's freaking out. And, uh, and you know, it's basically them trying to get around. Then she gets up. She, she flashes, like, the light. Um, this is all shot through VHS, and what it was is the family, like, wants the wake capture, so there's a bunch of VHS cameras. So she goes over to one of the cameras, and she's, like, turning the light on and off. And she realizes, oh, he can't see me. He doesn't have any eyes. His fucking head's chopped. <laughs> um, but then she That's goes funny. up by the casket, and she's trying to be all quiet. And she turns the radio on, and, like, he runs towards the radio. Um, but then, like, the top of the head is laying on the ground right there next to her. And then the eye starts looking at her. And so the body turns around and starts coming that way. <laughs> and, uh, and But then all of a sudden you hear a tornado siren. Which, if you live in the South or Midwest, you know what a tornado siren sounds like. Um, and 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 it all of a sudden tornado hits and just rips the thing apart, you know. And so this camera's like laying on its side, and it's just all. <sighs> then it shows. Then it comes back too, and it's weird. It shows the guy, the dead dead guy, laying there, and then the uh, lady. Uh, apparently has been turned into a zombie at this point because she just kind of like wanders towards where the side of the building had been ripped off and like climbs out and then walks away slowly and that's the end. That's cool, um, man. It, it was... The, the suspense in it was kind of good because of the, you know, what the fuck's going on and all this stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, it ended a little bit weird like, uh, what's going to happen, you know? But uh, I guess they all kind of end like that. Or um, maybe this because they get they watch them so they don't get possessed by any evil spirits. Maybe well, the evil cool spirit got, got maybe the spirit went in her. Yeah, I was like, this sounds like a good one. And then you said she walked out like a zombie, and I was like, oh. well, they're all short because it's an anthology, so you know. No, they should be an hour each. This the movie should be five hours long. <laughs> that would be cool. So then the next one is uh, called The Subject. This one was kind of cool. It was. Uh, it I really was, can't wait to see these now because I want to see exactly how. It, this, I'm gonna laugh now when, I, when this, you, whenever anything happens and it's gonna look exactly like you did. Yeah, the the next video. one was pretty good. It was. Um, it was. I guess uh, shot in Indonesia, um, and and or at least that's where it took place, and and so it was all subtitled. Uh, it was um, an evil scientist basically trying to merge man with machine. So you see these news reports of missing people, and then you start realizing like. Oh, this guy's... Well, it shows him, like, trying to make... It actually starts with, like, this head, and you see the head, like, ah, wake up, and it's, like, got these fucking... It's like they put it on a, a body of a mechanical spider, but then it, like, smokes and he dies, and the guy's, like, the doctor kind of looks at a camera and is like, oh, failure, I failed again, you know? So, this one was kind of interesting because... You know, the whole thing is basically found footage on a VHS tape. And this one was shot through the eyes of one of his subjects because he created a human VHS tape, VHS camera hybrid. 
So he like cut her head off basically and like put a VHS wow, that's, tape. That's, that's good. And it was really cool. There were some cool spots in it. Like one, she gets to a point. So they're talking about him on the news. A SWAT team type thing comes in and says like, he's like, you're not going to arrest me. They're like, we're not here to arrest you. We're, we're here to stop you. So they fucking just kill him, you know? But then they find the the woman... At first, there's a woman and a man that he's about to start working on. So they find the woman with the VHS head. And and uh, one of the guys is like, don't kill her. And everybody else is like, we need to kill her. She's not human anymore. And so she tries to run. And they, they had killed the guy. She, like, jumps back. But then all of a sudden, um, it's like these sirens come on. And it's like, if this is playing, I am dead. And... Basically, you're going to die, too. You know, you're not going to get out of here. And so uh, it was super fucking cheesy on the gunshots. Like everything, uh, being like someone who like shoots guns a lot and stuff, like it's it was like super cheesy and the CGI for the gunshots were really bad. But then all of a sudden they tried to like go out this door and this guy tries to like breach the door with a shotgun. It doesn't work. But then they get the door to open, I guess, and it, like, there's, like, a crazy explosion. Like, and it just blows some of the guy apart. And that was, like, really good. Like, the explosion was, like, really good. And after that, it's just, like, fucking carnage. Like, I mean, people are just getting slaughtered. So they're looking for the lady, and they see this other thing, and they go over there, and it's the guy that, they, that he had created. And he basically created a fucking death bot. Like, this guy has, like, this big sword hand. Like, and he's, like cutting people's heads off like scissors and i mean it's pretty good like picking people up stabbing them it, can, it kind of sounds like uh frankenstein's army Did yeah you ever see that one yeah and so he's running he's running uh, she's running she's trying to that thing tries to kill her too for some reason which i thought was a little bit weird but um uh she she's running and these soldiers are trying to kill her um, but then she falls, I, it was weird. It seemed like she fell down an elevator shaft. All of a sudden she was in this different room when she was running from the, the big killer guy. And, uh, she sees all, she sees pictures of herself and that's the first time she sees herself in the mirror. And it's cool when she sees herself in the mirror cause she touches and it sounds like she's rubbing like a microphone. It's like, Oh, that's cool. You know? And, uh, and and it's like really, it's just really cool. Like the, you know, how you see it. And the guy who was trying to not get him to kill her was their camera guy for the SWAT team thing. So, um, but she's, she's like going and, and, uh, she gets in this room and she starts seeing plans for herself and she sees this plan that looks like a machine gun. And then she sees her arm like, and it's cut off right there. So you knew where that was leading right away. So these guys are trying to kill her. She finds the machine gun. She fucking starts lighting everybody up. It was pretty cool. Um, and then she sees the guy who, the camera guy, and he's like, please don't. He goes, I'm just trying to live. You know, if you are too, let's get out of here. You know, because he's like, she's still a she's still a person. We need to return her to her parents. Um, it It ends up like... Everybody dies, like everybody gets killed. They kill fucking everybody. Um, except for her, even though she's been shot like 30 times, I'm not really sure how she's still walking. But uh, it kind of ends the same way. Like that guy's camera is laying on the ground and she just like kind of walks out of the building. So it kind of ended It's kind of like nearly people, exactly like... They don't know how to finish these shorts. They're just like, let's just make yeah, them walk away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was. It literally. I don't, ended I don't like that. Pretty much exactly like, um, like the empty wake one. So that was like kind of, uh, kind of weird because I was like, wow, that's how the last one ended. And you know, you're like, okay, whatever. And then there's some more bullshit from that like SWAT team that's like sucks. Um, I think probably in between there, there's a lot of that. <laughs> Sorry, Jennifer. Um, and then. The last one is called Terror, and it was... That sounds great. It was awesome because it's this, like, patriot group 
who's like, America's gone down to hell. You know, it's like, it's like uh, what the. And so so what's happening right now? Yeah, it's but like it, what everybody 90, thinks. But in 94. Yeah, yeah. Or what, what was it? 90, is it 94? 1994, yeah. You know, probably around the same time Timothy McVeigh oh, yeah. supposedly blew up the... Uh, That's why they did it like that. Yeah. So it was... Okay, so you see all these Patriot guys who are talking about all this stuff, and they, like, go and scope out this... Uh, I think they're in Detroit. I think it was Detroit. And they go and scope out this like federal building. They're like, how are we going to get in? And they have a guy who's walking around the camera. He's like, uh, camera there, uh, camera there. And then he's like, oh, and runs and gets back in the car. And they drive around. And they're like, that's where we'll do it, the loading dock. And they're like, plenty of sunlight. And they're like, if, if we don't, if we don't uh, do it whenever, there's not going to be enough sunlight. Um, I guess because the winter was coming, I guess. Um, and so they go back to the farm. They're on this big farm, and they're all... Uh, this guy shows up, and he has uh, he has all these, like, guns and stuff he's given them. And they're filming everything, obviously, with VHS. And and they, they like, are like, we want to thank you. You know, you're a patriot. And it was a... Uh, and it was a police officer who supposedly got all this stuff out of the Detroit police station. And one of the things was like a, like, you know, giant, like 50 caliber machine gun, you know, and it's like two guys are carrying it through and, you know, they, they supposedly, you know, he's like, he supplied us with the arms to take America back or whatever. And so, um, it keeps showing this scene from a security camera that they're, they're going into this cage in this in this like weird cage. This alarm will go off, and they and they go in this cage, and this guy's like, "Oh, please no!" And they like blast him in the head and just kill him. And you're like, "What the fuck?" And then like again later, it shows him again going in, and I was like, "Uh, that's the same guy." They're like killing him again, and I was like, and you know, Emily was like, "Oh, maybe it's just from a different angle." I'm like, "No, it was different people. It was like a different gun and everything." Um, so it's like really kind of weird and, um, it goes through all this stuff and the, you know, you can just tell there's a bunch of drunken buffoons and whatever, but it goes through and you realize this dude's a vampire that's in there. You don't know what the plan is or, you know, I was like, oh, maybe they're just gonna like, maybe this vampire's crazy if he gets let go and they're gonna like release him in the building you know he's gonna kill all the federal workers or something i don't know and turns out they're like okay let's test it if we're gonna make sure this works let's test it and they have a rabbit and they have this syringe but it's wrapped in like tons of tape and stuff and they take this rabbit and they inject it and they just like set it there in this cage and they all they're like the sun's coming up run and they like just haul ass and dude, the sun comes up and it's like a fucking giant. It's like a stick of dynamite because <laughs> vampire blood in the sun in in this storyline just explodes like a massive explosion. So their plan is to put this guy in a box and to put it on the delivery dock and then like hit this button. The box they kind of show this part to you. But it was a failure, and it and it like was gonna fall open, and the vampire will explode and blow up the building. Oh shit! So I mean, it was probably my favorite concept out of all of them. Like it was just like the the fact that like oh vampire blood will like blow up. I didn't really like how it ended. It ended with they get super drunk the night before they're gonna do all this stuff, except for one guy who's like watching watching the uh, the videotape. You know, he's like the only one because he's on duty, like to, uh, to to watch the vampire. And this drunk guy who's like with the video, who's been videotaping everything, comes and he goes, "Let's go fuck with him." And so like they're in there, and the and he's dead. The vampire's dead at the moment. So they're like lifting him up, blah, and the guy's like, "I dare you to make out with him, kiss him." And they're like, "Ah," and like he falls and gets blood like all over. So him. it starts a. Does he turn into a vampire? Well. I thought he was going to turn into a vampire. He didn't turn into a vampire. Missed opportunity. I will, what happened was... Armageddon. 
what happened was they the alarm starts going off so he's come back to you know i guess the alarm goes off every time he like wakes you know wakes back up and they they so they're all wake up who's on guard duty ah, and all this stuff did one of the guys like jumps up into the back of the truck that they've already mounted the 50 cal on he just starts fucking blasting and he kills his own guys because they can't control it so like they like shoot him that was pretty cool uh also the guns in there i actually looked this up were uh uh done by mag movie mag mag movie armaments because all that gun stuff was like legit. Like everything looked like. Not like uh, rust. Not like, yeah. <laughs> Too soon? Ooh. I don't think it is. And then, uh, and then, so, the after he finished shooting, the one guy who was on guard duty that like got the blood all over him comes walking out and they're like, stop, you have vampire blood. And boom, he just, because he walks out into the sun. <laughs> And just the blood on him, like, just blows, and people, oh, like, shit. fly back, you know, and and uh, kill some people. But then they're like, we gotta go in and get that vampire. If the sun goes down, we're, we can't stop, he'll be unstoppable. So, they go in and try to fight the vampire. Dude, the vampire was pretty badass. Like, his mouth, like, opened this way. Like, and just was teeth, and this way, too. And he's, like, just biting people's faces off. Like, it was pretty they ripped tight. Off, they ripped off fucking Guillermo del Toro. Yeah. But, I mean, like, it was it was cool. It was really cool. Um, I, I, I figure there's probably, like, a really limited budget on these movies, too. Um, but, um, you know, that, that was done really well. Um, and... And at the end, the head patriot guy is uh, in the cage where they used to keep him. And I guess they have a fail-safe button that they could hit if anything ever went bad. And the vampire walks out, and, you know, this is on security camera, and hits the button. And, like, this thing opens, and the sun hits him, and he blows up. And I guess, like, you know, blows up the whole compound. Kill, kill but I'm kind of like, why did the vampire kill himself? I didn't get that. I, di I didn't really understand why the vampire would have killed himself. Um, but he did. You know? I mean, he was free, finally. But maybe he hated being a vampire. Who fucking knows? Um, yeah. It was weird. But I don't even need to watch this. this no, you don't. Now. You, you don't. I saw everything. I literally saw everything in yeah. my head. As you were talking, I was making it up and, in my head. And you just plug in, okay, 93 on Rotten Tomatoes, I understand. And I was reading your, your notes. Yeah. Like, Those aren't notes. Yeah, they are. <laughs> don't be ashamed. I um, need notes. I'm old. The, <laughs> like, the cool, I don't remember here, names. Here's the cool things about them. Uh, I mean, some cool stuff that I looked up about it. I was like, man, this looks really good. This doesn't look like they just plugged it into a... Uh, to a uh, filter, like a VHS filter, like I have on my phone. It was so I looked up and and so some it of really stuff, looks like VHS. Yeah, yeah, some of it looks like really degraded VHS. And I guess they recorded it in like uh, thirty frames per second or whatever, twenty nine, whatever, and uh, and then put it on VHS tape and recorded it over and over to other VHS tapes. Oh wow, man! And then yeah, that's, that'll do it. And then put it back into the you know the format to get the actual how it looked because some of it i was like man that looks exactly like some of our crappy vhs tapes we have here we have a lot of vhs tapes here um but yeah it was it was really that that was cool i really liked how that stuff looked overall the movie was really great like i i would definitely recommend seeing it um but i don't need to now yeah the very end and don't then it just like it cuts and i watch the i watch the credits and it cuts instantly and goes into like a, a millions of dead cops song and you know, like it's uh plays plays through the credits and i was like you know nothing special other than the very very end it says hell ratma which was cool it was like something if you copy this movie we'll feed you to ratma or something i don't know but uh they want us to copy this the movie. weird thing was this is the first movie I've ever watched, and I and you know I watched the credits like decent amount of time. That like had coronavirus stuff in the credits, like 
coronavirus. Uh, What's that? <laughs> it was like, or it was like COVID nineteen uh, something room, you know? Because I guess they had to like COVID nineteen hit, and they had to like edit in a hotel or something. I'm just like, that's weird. Like, it's funny you say. It's weird that that's in there. Because the show last night, people were coming up to me and showing me their IDs and saying, do you need to see my COVID card? And I was like, it's a fucking punk show. I'm like, of course I do. They're all fucking woke now. <laughs> oh, that's messed up. I don't they care. used to be woke in a different way, I think. Yeah, it was. It was uh, um, so yeah, that was pretty much it on that movie. Man, I thought you hated margaritas and you just like outdid me. I added the deep eddies. Oh, shh, that's a lot of alcohol. Yeah. I don't even know what I did with the margaritas. I had a whole jug of them somewhere. So that's it on that, but. Yeah, so that was. I guess I'm just going to freestyle, talk about stuff when I was a kid. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about brain scan. You know, look, I'm wearing a brain scan shirt. Yeah, it's a good movie. A lot of people yeah. don't know about that. Is before Edward, Edward Furlong, Furlong was, was fat his... and drug addict. Yeah, man, that's a damn shame about Wait, him. Wait, I don't know if he's fat and a drug addict. No, he is. I know he's fat. No, he is. He ruined his career over fucking drugs. Like, come on. He was so good. And then he just fucking threw it all away. Dude, the Terminator. He was such a good little actor in Terminator. Yeah. Yeah, oh, if you haven't seen... I've got a margarita on the way over here. Brain scan. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's some good stuff. But yeah, being a kid, man. Do some more margarita. I, I was born in '71, so my mom. The first horror movie I really saw was my Cheers. favorite. My favorite movie. One of my faves horror movies. There's two. My grandmother took me to see. Alien when it came out and she saw the trailer on TV we couldn't like go to YouTube and watch this shit we had to wait for it to come out while we were watching fucking what was the name of that uh what's the name of that we'd be watching uh the actors when they were doing the Olympic inside the actor studio no 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 there used to be a show about famous actors doing uh Olympic sports. You remember that? Come on. I'm, I, am I that old? I'm not much younger need, than you, I need but to I find, don't remember I need that. To, yes. So we would be watching that because she loved that show. And So wait, it's... It was famous actors doing Olympic sports. Yes, it sounds ridiculous, but we would watch it. Uh, and the trailer came out and I was like, Grandma, I want to go see that. And she was like, no, es un diablo. <laughs> And I was like, it's not a devil, it's an alien. And so yeah. Which took, movie was that? Alien. Oh, Alien. The first okay. Alien. Sorry, I missed that part. I was too busy looking so at that my So that set me on my path to horror movies. I was terrified. Uh, and after that, I would just be like, I want to go see this movie. I want to go see this movie. And then my parents took me to the drive-in to go see this little movie called The Exorcist. What? And I was fucking terrified. I'm still scared of that movie because of that. You know how like people say, that movie scarred me. No, this fucking movie scarred me. I was having dream nightmares for weeks after. I would I remember. I don't remember a lot of things about my childhood, but I remember waking the fuck up screaming, seeing Reagan's Reagan's head, gonna get me Reagan's head turning. What was the devil called in that? Pazuzu. Pazuzu. Captain Howdy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that movie scared the shit. And my parents took me to go see it. I remember lying on the fucking floorboard crying. So, I remember when... How old were you then? How old, When did that movie come out? Didn't actually yeah, just come out in like 78? 78? Yeah. Um, I was like I remember seven. when I got older, my mom said we can't watch this movie because it would possess our house. Yeah. Yeah, I will. Like, I mean, would, like, it people... It would possess your house because like, it fucking... I grew up in a very religious Pentecostal household. And so... Uh, horror movies were very much frowned on, and for some reason, me and my friend Wayne, like... Hold on, Lyric just said, 
Tequila and Deep Eddie is called a Texas Tornado. Hmm. Holy shit. Tequila and Deep Eddie? I mean, that's what you just did. I just drank a Texas Tornado. Thank yeah. you, Lyric. I did not know that. Okay, so, uh, me and my friend Wayne, uh, somehow in middle school, started, like, we found, like, Fangoria magazine. Oh, man. And we are already into, uh, into, like, a lot of, you know, horror movies. And when I movies. when I die, I'm going to will you all my Fangorias. So you're going to have that. Carlos is going to be murdered tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Carlos has all the Fangorias. I went over there one time, he has, like, like from... The first one on. I told you. I've been yeah. die hard for forever. Since yeah. middle school, I started collecting them. Yeah. So I, I uh, we, we kind of got into Fangoria. His parents weren't so, they didn't care. And he could like put, you know, it was like the centerfold for Ninja Magazine. And then like Texas <laughs> Horror, you know, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And, uh, you know, like, so um, the very first Fangoria uh that had uh hotel hell on the cover no, issue number nine. Oh, that was issue nine okay yep. I, I just remember i read that at your house so or i looked at it at your house so i was couldn't remember it's the rarest fingoria and you have it and i have it graded. i also have issue number one yeah but you, know, you have a full box of them and i also have all the room all morgues yeah the i have room issue morgues. number two room morgues out of austin now right yeah uh, Fangoria Magazine, their warehouse burned down, so they lost all their original copies to make reprints. They yeah. lost everything. Yeah. So if you have them, they're worth money. My mom actually burnt down Fangoria Magazine she probably because, did. It was, because it was possessing my soul. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I couldn't, uh, I, I, it was really hard for me to watch horror movies, um, you know, with out what in the did open. Say? Lies. I guess Doug is your favorite. About what? Oh, that I'm getting the stuff. Oh. Whatever. You're gonna make indie films. Joint, <laughs> you're not gonna joint make, custody. You're not gonna. You're not gonna make horror movies. You're gonna make indie films. So <laughs> we're we're um. So I had to watch horror movies, kind of secretly. And me too. I would stay up late and watch and, HBO. That's how oh I man. saw Sleepaway Camp, and it scared the fucking well, yeah, bejesus dude. out of me. Yeah, a girl with when a she's dick? standing there with her dick hanging out, dude. It's the first transgender hero. I didn't know what that was. I mean, now it's everywhere, so yeah. it's not really scary anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Please say all hate mail <laughs> to z e n t a t zero at gmail dot com. <laughs> So you need to memorize your your email so you can so you can say where to send the email. All the email goes to you. Okay. Um. So we would, you know, PG thirteen things weren't so hard to get into, like going to the movies. No, PG thirteen nowadays is what am I trying to say? Uh, rated R back then was. It should have been rated X. Some of that shit was yeah, fucking stuff, hardcore. I mean, some of the stuff was rated X. They had to like change. Yeah, it Robocop. That. Robocop was rated X when it came <laughs> out. No, for real. I know. It was rated X. I have the Criterion Collection. There's full frontal male nudity in that. No, <laughs> shoot a penis off. Oh wait, that's the remake. It's it's rated X, and I have the DVD copy of it because they it was too graphic for theaters. It was rated X because of the. Um, the headshot of the cop you know, of the head uh, Murphy. Of Murphy, and I, I own that. By the way, lyric that's yours. I'm not gonna give it to Doug. Yeah, if you uh, if you haven't watched the movies that made us, you need to watch all those. They're awesome. All your favorite movies. I was gonna say that's what I was gonna start talking about too. The movies I went to to see at the theater, my mom would take me, and it's just such a shame because my mom's the one who got me into horror. Like she did. I cannot see that. Yes, she did. She took me. I would be like, can we go see Nightmare on Elm Street? I saw Nightmare on Elm Street there. I saw Robocop. I saw... Shit. I saw so many horror movies. And then she took me to see Suspiria. I saw Suspiria cool. at the theater. And that movie scared the shit out of me at the end. When the girl comes out and she has glass in her eyes. That, that ter it was terrifying. The, uh... And then one day, <clears throat> she just stopped. And she didn't give me a reason. Goddamn religion, man. Jesus. Um, so, 
I had to sneak into a lot of movies. So we did the uh, buy a ticket for this movie, <laughs> right, go into afterwards. a different movie, uh, or we would, if someone got a ticket, they would go and open the emergency exit before they had those fucking alarms on them, and like we would just run in real quick and just sit down. Um, or, <clears throat> you know, I mean, the majority of the time it was finding older kids and giving them an extra 10 bucks to buy a ticket for you. That was how... We usually got into the movies. I went and um, saw Terminator, and after Terminator, I snuck in to see Rad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Theater hopping used to be huge. Yeah. And then, like, places like Draft House They're like, can figured I see your out, ticket? can I see your ticket? This You're one seat over from where you need to be. It's bullshit. Yeah. But theater hopping used to be a huge thing. Uh, uh, you know, I think they just kind of expected it. Like, once you were in... Like, those old movie theaters, Emily used to work in a movie theater, and the old movie theaters, you would go in, if you went on the right night, say like a Tuesday night where no one's at the movies, you go into the matinee, you buy your ticket at the concession stand. There's no one at the box office, and then the same person is like, oh, do you want any popcorn or anything? No one's going to check the theater at all. No one's like standing at the door. So once you're in there, you are you were in there. Once you're past that velvet rope. Oh man, you were in there. And I remember when that slowly started to change and I was like, this sucks. But you know, I mean, I guess technically I was stealing money from the movie theater. I skipped sad. school to go see aliens. That's cool. I skipped school to go see uh Total Recall. I think I skipped school to see RoboCop too. I, I skipped work to go see the new Total Recall. Oh, really? That movie no, sucked. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it, it yet. It sucks. Nothing to do with Mars. <clears throat> Who, it was based on the actual book. Whoever wrote the screenplay for the old Total Recall did an amazing job by changing it up. It's, <laughs> Good I job, kept waiting. Balls. I kept waiting for him to go to Mars and it just never happened. They showed the three titty chick too fast. Didn't even let me wait for it. Before you knew it, 15 minutes in, there's a chick with three titties. I was like, nope. No, it's not cool. And speaking of bad, I was like, got on Hulu last night. And and before I went to bed, and I was like, I'm going to just watch something until I pass out. You could have watched VHS 94. No, I, w I wouldn't have <laughs> not watched it. I was so tired. So I was like, hey... There's Queen of the Damned. That movie, I remember watching it at the theater. I did too. And I was like, five minutes into it, I was like, this movie sucks. It was so bad. But then Aaliyah died and you thought... Oh, I felt bad. Yeah, Aaliyah like died. It. She fucking hit a mountain in a plane and that was her last thing she did. That was fucking terrible. She looked really good in it though. I didn't even get that far. Oh. I'm telling you, it was fucking terrible. I just went to bed. Wait, is that the first time you've ever seen it? No, I saw it at the theater, oh, okay, okay. but I didn't yeah, remember it. That. Yeah. Yeah, I did too. Stuart Townsend, that dude sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Another movie I wish, it's my, one of my, I said I have favorites. Aliens, oh no, Alien and The Thing. Wait, Alien Alien not is aliens. Aliens is good. I love it, but it's not my favorite. Alien. It's got Paul Reiser in it. You know, that's the only I thing wish, that fucking ruins it for I me. Wish I don't he like would have Paul like tried to be a little more funny. No, no. I think they had a different. Have, like made me like. I have a laugh TV? track. What Can you it? have a laugh track in, yeah. a, in a movie? We should redo Aliens. <laughs> With a laugh and track. And every time Paul Reiser says something, we like put a laugh track in. <laughs> the thing. <laughs> I never got to see the thing in the theater when it came out my mom she wouldn't let me okay so she wouldn't let me but you did see a you did see the thing in yeah but i don't remember how sick you know. lyric uh viewed it or what what did she do she showed it for me for my birthday yeah but i was deathly ill at the time so i barely remember what was crazy is i texted you that night and i was like hey i'm gonna come out and i had to work the next morning you were like dude we haven't even started it yet. And it was already like midnight. Yeah. I, think. And you're I remember like, that. We hadn't even started it. Don't you you're like, don't come or whatever. And, uh, yeah. 
It started late. I don't know why. I don't remember. I remember some of it. I just know it started way later than Another you movie. originally told me. Another movie I wanted to see when it came out. I was in middle school. My mom was like, hell no. Fear No Evil. Fear No Evil. Where a, at the beginning of the movie, a priest battles Lucifer at an old castle. And he spears him with this cross of the spear that... The spear that stabbed... Stabbed Christ on the cross. Yeah. And kills him and he says... Kills Lucifer? Yes. And he goes, I, I shall be back. Well, this kid is born and it's the son of Lucifer. And he's... The, the dad and the mom, he just stays in his room and doesn't do much. And, like, they show, like, scenes of him. Like, he's reading a book. And then the shadow shuts the book. The shadow of his hand shuts the book, and the book closes without him touching it. How do I not know anything about what this What in movie? the hell, Doug? I, I owned it, and I lent it to somebody, <laughs> and it's gone. You need to stop lending out your I movies. I know. I need to. But I want people to to experience what I experience. I'm, I'm going to try. I'm going to buy it. They can experience what you experience while watching our show. Yeah. Well, he he's uh, Antichrist reborn, and the dad and the mom know, so he treats him like shit. And he goes to this high school, and everybody thinks he's a fucking freak. Does he, like, kill him and stuff? Hell yeah, fucking dude. Cool. It's so good. My mom would not let me see that. And my friends went and saw it, and they were like, dude, this scene happened. I, I remember that. It's crazy. I don't remember a lot, but I do remember oh, the movie. Lyric said that they had to run a 50-foot Ethernet cable. They forgot to bring the movie on your birthday, so you had to rent it. Yeah. The thing. Your favorite movie, and you forgot to bring it. Damn, where'd you find an ether 50-foot Ethernet cable at fucking midnight? <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, Fear No Evil. What, what did I say? Fear No Evil. Oh, my God. Fear No Evil. What did I say? Fear No Evil. Fear No, Fear no Evil. Yeah. Watch it. It's great. Remember, Lyric, we tried to watch it on YouTube, but it was so bad. I was just like... It wait, was... you just told me it was good. Oh, wait. The YouTube was bad. The YouTube video was so bad. I was like, Lyric, Why? I just can't do like this. It... it was a oh, copy so of a copy it? of it. Oh. Yeah. Film the VHS copy, but uh, I try to. I'm gonna look again on on um, Amazon, and we'll do a review on that. You'll love it, dude. That'd be cool. Um, the dude that plays Lucifer, I think that's his only movie. He is such a fucking weird looking guy, and the way they make Lucifer, he has like fins, like fish fins, and huge fucking eyebrows. <laughs> but it looks fucking creepy. It works. So. After your mom stopped taking you to... <clears throat> my brother started. The movie. Okay. My brother started taking me. So, my my thing is, like, I couldn't go. I couldn't get in. Um, and, and... I don't know how I got into these. I just remember going in. Yeah. You were in Dallas, right? Yeah. Man, this is San Antonio, bro. I went to fucking Southside. Fucking McCreelis Center? Yeah, I went to McCreelis for a couple. I went to... What the fuck was it called on the south side? Now it's called the Aztec. Have you ever been there? Mm -mm. So next time, one day we should just go. Oh, the Aztec Drive-In? No, the Aztec Theater on the south side. It's a huge What's the theater. What's called? I don't know. It's something weird. So it's called the Aztec now? The Aztec Movie Theater. But they have a huge arcade inside. We should go. Huge arcade. Remember, Lyric? Me and Lyric, I bought, I spent like... I got like thirty dollars worth of quarters, and I told her we're not fucking leaving until we beat the aliens game with the two rivals. Dude, I did that with House of the Dead. Me and Emily did that with House of the Dead in England. It was awesome. You remember that lyric? It was fun. So so fun. So, I I had a problem with uh, getting into the movies where in the eighties where I had to early nineties. No, I was already old enough in the early nineties. Because once you hit about 16, they don't really ask you for your ID to buy the ticket. Yeah. They just, like, sell you the ticket. You, you probably look like the way you looked last week for your Halloween costume yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I couldn't, ah, grow a yes. beer. I couldn't grow a beard until I was, like, 40. So. I miss And I still can't. 
I but, still miss growing my luscious black beard. It's all gray now. So we, uh, I was really excited when, when, um, when Blockbuster opened up. When Blockbuster opened up, uh, there were a couple, couple tiny little movie theaters, uh, I mean movie rental places, uh, where I was, but when Blockbuster opened up, they had everything. They had a full horror section, and everything. it had... I would everything. I would go. My mom would take me. I would tell her, "Can you take me to Blockbuster?" Because I would get the new Fangoria, mm -hmm. and I would be like, "We're gonna go rent this. We're gonna go rent the Keep. We're gonna go rent Night of the Creeps. We're gonna go." That's how I found out about Night of the Creeps. I fucking love Night of the Creeps. Yeah, that's a great. All movie. through Fangoria, every everything through Fangoria. Uh, Blockbuster was the best. When they closed down, they had that sale. Fucking should have went, man. I know, me too. They had but like, DVDs. They had they had uh, VHS for a dollar, dude. Imagine the horror. I would have fucking wiped out the horror section. I know, it's crazy. But you know, I was still pretty young when that happened. I was like, I don't need all this. Damn it! I would have definitely got the troll DVD or the troll VHS. Got it right here. Best drawn video. <laughs> What else? What else? What else am I thinking about? Yeah, but uh, I used to love going in there. Yeah, the the funny thing was like going in there and like seeing, you know, movie posters and like just covers of the VHS or the the DVD near the end. Like, how many terrible movies did you watch because the cover looked so badass? They would spend probably more <laughs> on the cover of the artist than the actual. I mean, like hand painted, like badass covers, and then like Drew Struzman <laughs> <laughs> pay him a million dollars to do the cover, and the movie was crap. Yeah, that reminds me of Abomination, Abominable. I told you about that one. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. So Abomination, it's not. It's in uh, maybe like ten years old, maybe a little bit older. So the guy that directed it. His dad was one of the big guys that did the music for the movies. I can't remember his name. So he had his dad do the score for this fucking B movie. And the dad knew Drew Struzman. So Drew Struzman did the fucking DVD cover. So terrible movie. No, it's actually oh, pretty it's good. good. The, the fucking makeup... It is so B, B movie. But it's actually a decent movie. So it actually made some money because of the DVD artwork. It's Drew Struzman, and it's a B movie. What, but that, that's the thing is, like, the, the covers of those movies sold the movie sometimes without ever doing anything like it's straight to video stuff with like these really cool hand drawn hand painted um uh covers and and you know posters and then the movie was just like a complete b movie but it was abominable like so cool. abominable is pretty good but like i said the, the 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 makeup is it's practical effects the the bigfoot kills people like rips their fucking heads off and crushes them so it's just Practical effects, blood That's cool. explodes. When he's biting this guy's head off, there's this one scene. He grabs the guy. the The Bigfoot opens his mouth, and it's so slow because it's like stretching, opening up. And then he puts the whole guy's head, and he chomps <laughs> down, and it bites the whole front of the guy's head off. But it's great. Yeah, watch it. I have it. I'm gonna lend it to you. You have to watch it. Oh, you have it? Uh, didn't I, I? You might have it already. No, I don't have that. Okay, I'll look for, for sure. It. I don't have. I have like Love Actually or something. That's a great, great movie. <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> I'm sorry, it was this Terrible. deep thought. Deep thought about Love Actually. <clears throat> They're showing it at the draft house. I was gonna see if you wanted to go. Not you, not you, Emily. Just Doug. I do not want to go. Oh, I can't believe you. If Rick's not killing zombies, I don't want to see him fucking holding a sign up that says. It's all about it's all about his British voice, bro. That British voice. I can't believe you don't like it. I'm disappointed. 
right, maybe I'll give it another shot. No, you're not, because I'm not inviting you. See, a Paducah said Abominable is so good. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. I don't give a shit if you go to Love Actually. I'm going anyway. There are so many good... The thing is plain. I saw it on there. Well, that might have just I been think it. I think it already it's passed. Already passed. We don't go to as many movies as we used to. You know, coronavirus made everything go straight to HBO or... I still haven't seen Dune. Or... Did you watch Dune? No. You don't want to? Dude, the reviews are so bad. People Lurk are just said it was bad. Lurk, what would you think of Dune? Anybody? Dune? I hear the visual effects are really good. Lurk said the sound. But it was just slow. Dude, see, that's a big thing to me. It's like, when I was younger, I used to think... I want to be a makeup artist. Um, like I, I used to I, want to also. I literally uh, wanted to go. Um, I would tell my dad, Dad, I want to be a makeup artist. Go to the fridge, get a piece of bologna, throw it on your friend, cut out the eyes and the mouth. There you go. There's your mask. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> so me and my friend Wayne, who was also, you know, the horror, me and the him who watched all the horror movies together. We both wanted to do, uh, you know, go to one of the big makeup schools. Um, and, you know, that obviously never happened. Never too old, dude. Tom Savini has a school. It's only like $75,000. Yeah, I was about to say, he teaches you how to act, too. Does he? No, I don't know. I was just kidding. <laughs> Lyric said it's good sound design. See, so after that, I was like, you know what I really want to do is sound design. I fucking love like movies that have really good sound design and I think probably in all the like three shots in a show we did like um I I feel like I always talked about the sound or the sound design dude I fucking love sound design if if they do it right it's just so good it's just so it can it can like make a movie and then I mean uh I don't know I I just really like sound design that's really all I gotta say about that. That's all. I, you sounded like Forrest Gump right there. Yeah. What'd you think about Forrest Gump? Uh, Forrest Gump was a good movie. I still watch that movie. Yeah, it's a good movie. Let me see. Let me see more more movies that I loved growing up with. I I feel like I feel like Adam Sandler. I oh, mean, if water, Adam Sandler would make a horror movie, he did. Fuck. Hubie Halloween. No. You know how many times I fell asleep through that movie? It was good. It was funny, but I tried to watch it three times and I fell asleep. <laughs> what did Larry say? Come to fart school with me. <laughs> Dude, we're too old for that shit. Yeah, I'm almost done, Larry. I got a good year. Maybe a year and a half left. You better hurry up with your movie. Yeah, so you better dedicate that shit to me. Ah, <sighs> that's a terrible thing No, it's, I think it's hilarious. I lived a good life. Um, what else? But yeah, Blockbuster. Back to block, Blockbuster. I remember going to Blockbuster. Dude, I remember going to Blockbuster being so fucking high. I, I never did drugs. Being high, standing there just looking at the same video. And one of my friends <laughs> happened to go in there one day. <laughs> and she was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I just turned and I looked at her. And then I was like, oh, shit, it's been about five minutes. I better answer her. <laughs> but it wasn't five minutes. My my dad, I remember uh, I watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre. My dad wasn't so much against horror movies. You know what? I've, I don't even remember my, what I saw. It was my mom. But... At some point, what year was Texas Chainsaw Massacre? 75? 75? I think 75. So it came out, you know, uh, when I was a baby. But I remember when I was a little bit older, I wanted to watch it. And, uh, you know, it was before my dad left us. <laughs> True story, but I'm not crying about it right now. Oh God, I had too much to drink. Carlos. My dad stayed. <laughs> it sucked. So, before my dad left, we, 
<laughs> we, uh, and at some point I was like, I want to watch Texas Chainsaw Massacre, me and my brother Jason. And we were like, and he was like, that's a true story. Oh, that my happened God. in Dallas. And he's like totally like telling us it was true, but he let us watch it. So it was like kind of cool because I probably was like 10 years old, if that much, you know. And uh, and he, he let us watch it because it was on, I don't know what it was on, but he, he let us watch it. and uh, But he scared the crap out of us because he was telling us it was true. And my dad was a cop when <laughs> before we were born, so he told us. Oh, I was actually on the investigation. Oh my god! So, so he's like, he was totally hamming it up, and so it like made it that much scarier, you know. So it was like really, really, uh, really messed up when I watched it because like I thought it was a complete true story, and then everything. Don't you hate that movies are like, this is a true story, Blair it's Witch a, Project, fuck yeah. you know. It's like so dumb. Maybe like one percent of the movie is actually yeah. true. Yeah. They were in the woods. Yeah. That's it. There were some people in some woods. They one were time. in the woods. But other than that, you know uh, I've still never seen Texas Blair Chainsaw Massacre. Project. I've still never seen that it. That is that movie made so much fucking what, money what year on did that come out? A budget. So much movie on that budget, like you have your glasses. I'm too old to read this. No, and I'm kind of just. No, what is this again? It. What is this drink? Margarita. You don't like them. I don't even taste it anymore, so it's yeah, cool. See? <laughs> Texas That's tornado. A, Texas tornado. Texas tornado. Well, I don't. Is know. Is any more of those? Uh, I don't know what year Blair Witch came out. Ninety. Hold on, I'm gonna check. Ninety two. I'm gonna say ninety two. So, Blair Witch Project is eighty seven minutes long. Nineteen ninety nine. Oh, is shit. it that was, old? It's that it was new. Off. Is that right? Nineteen ninety nine. Okay. Well, I was already a huge horror. Yeah, because it was already n internet. That's how they got famous. Right. By saying you're right. Hey, and that was like they put that out first. Yeah. A group of teenagers lost in the woods. Right. It was like, and they did a good job because they were all unknown actors, actresses. Yeah. Um, and it was one of the first found footage type. Movies. I saw it at the theater. That movie. That movie kind of scared me. So. I was already a huge horror fan at that point. Don't watch it, Emily, because you're gonna get scared. Um, I, she probably saw it at the movie theater. Um, oh, student filmmakers. Yes. Student filmmakers. See, I didn't even know that. All I know is, when it came out, it was so hyped up that I was like, I. It kind of at some point, I got. Was like I'm never watching that fucking movie. You should watch it. Like, I, well, then I said, I started saying a couple years ago, I'll watch it if I can find it on VHS. That's what I started go. saying. I was like, I'll I'll watch it if I find it on VHS, and I have it on so, VHS. What was it? 2016. And I still I think? haven't watched it. So we need, to, we need to do a night where we watch this and talk. About 2016, it. I think, came out with the woods. Yeah. But it was a fake title. It was actually called the Blair, Blair Witch Project, yep. and it was about the brother of the girl that went missing. He was like, "I'm gonna go find her," and it was it was cool. They updated it so they had like drones and stuff, and there was like a weird like time thing, like one of their friends goes missing, and then like an hour into the movie. They find him again, and he has this huge beard and long hair. And he's like, they're like, where, where, where have you been? He was like, I've been here for over a year. Like, it's fucking weird. And that's and like they, a Blair Witch spinoff, the spinoff or whatever. It was. It's called the Blair Witch Project again. But yeah, we went to the draft house. Wait, when did this one come out? 2016, I think. Oh, okay. So we went to the draft house. Omega let us in. To watch it when the theater was closed. So it was just like six of us and all the lights were out. So I went in the theater and I was like, hello. Everybody disappeared. And I was like, motherfuckers, are y'all trying to scare me? I'm going to fucking die if y'all jump out. <laughs> and then I heard shit because they said that draft house is haunted. The so one I, here? Huh? The one here? Yeah, the one North at Park. North Park. 
<coughs> they said there's always shit in the in the bathroom. I mean, there not in the toilet. Shut up. <laughs> not in the bathroom, but like doors close and the water turns on by itself when you're taking a crap. Supposedly. Whatever, Doug. I've heard stuff. <sighs> well, anyway, it, I thought it was pretty good. And they actually show the Blair Witch in this one. Because they don't show her in the first one. You just spoiled it for me. I don't give a shit. We're this like... is a spoiler fucking show. Oh, another movie I wanted to talk about. It's not too old. But Emily should not watch it at all. Because it's terrifying. Grave Encounters. You need to watch it. You need to watch it. That movie... The only thing that ruins it for me is... See? Lyrica said... Theater oh, 7 and 8 are Theater haunted. 7 is haunted. Yeah, that's where I got the full beer spilled on me by the fucking guy that didn't even apologize. Why did Omega didn't know who this guy was? Because he was a ghost. He was a ghost. <laughs> Our server was a ghost. <laughs> no, Grave Encounters. What do you think of Grave Encounters, Lyric? CGI. The only thing that ruined it is the CGI. But man, that is a... It's about... Grave Encounters is about this show called Grave Encounters. And the guy is all professional. He has these girls. <laughs> See? He has these girls that work with him and the photographers. And he has this fucking spiritual guy that goes in. He was like, I feel something here. There's something here. And they're like on the show and he's like, Next on Grave Encounters, we're going to explore. So it's like all the ghost hunter shows so, from like the late 90s. But then that's how it starts out. You're like, next on Grave Encounters. And then it's like, cut. And the guy's like, fucking bullshit. What are we going to do tonight? <laughs> are we going to do this? Yeah, let's fucking do this. So they set up all their cameras at this asylum. And then like fucking crazy shit starts happening. And they get their, their shit scared out of them. It's, it's pretty good. But like I said, the only thing that ruins it for me is the CGI. The lyric said, you left me in your apartment by myself with all the lights off and told me to watch it while you went out to go see a movie. I was <laughs> terrified. <laughs> yep, sounds like me. <laughs> I do remember that. That's messed up. And then part two starts off exactly after that, and it's actually pretty good. But like I said, Emily, don't watch it because it'll scare the shit out of you. It's scary. It's pretty scary. But it's a, it's a good story. People always talk about it. I'm surprised you haven't seen it. I think it might be on Hulu. I'll check it out. Yes, you I'll should. Add it to my list. No, oh, whatever. I'm right. I'm always watching movies, and I didn't. I'm, I let you down, Doug. I'm sorry. I know. <sighs> like you're like, hey, I just watched 37 movies this week. Yeah. And then like you didn't watch. Yeah. VHS 94. I know. I, know. I was a little sad, but I drank it away. So what cool. else? What else? Come on. I'm trying to think of some of the favorite horror movies I like. You know what one of my favorite horror movies is? I Pumpkin know what it is. Head. Pumpkinhead is great. Fuck, dude. I like loved it. I loved that movie. When I, I hate younger. when people say, oh, the best fucking Halloween movie is Friday the 13th. No, the best Halloween movie is Pumpkinhead. Dude. It has the word fucking pumpkin in the title. Dude, so... It's weird. I just, trick saw, treat. I just saw um, a weird like trailer the other day, and I re I didn't even realize it was the Pumpkinhead trailer until like it showed like the kids on their dirt bikes running over the. That over was the sad, head. man. Yeah. I felt that was really sad. Yeah, look, and there's like some like uh, what's her name's in that uh, uh, blossoms in that, right? Oh yeah, yeah. She yeah. plays a little hillbilly girl. Yeah, she's yeah. one of the little hillbilly. Appalachian Mountains. Little hillbilly. Yeah, that's that. how it started. It, the trailer's like, in the Appalachian Mountains, they say. And I'm like, what is this cheesy ass movie? And I'm like, whoa, Mountains. that's, you know, it's like, that's a terrible That's where trailer. Wendigo is. Appalachian, man. Oh, and people don't know that's, uh, that movie was directed by Stan Winston. Yeah. And his team, his yeah, team Stan did Stan Winston, uh, that was one of the schools that I was like, ooh, Stan man, Winston School of Arts. You know, you can, you can do it online, right? Yeah. I mean, they, I, I signed hard. up for their emails and I still get emails all the time. And I watch the free shit when they're like, hey, this is free today. Find out how to make fucking your hands look like a giant creature hand. Man, yeah, Stan cool Winston stuff. directed. I was really sad when he died. Yeah. Like, I, I've only been sad when 
Wayne Stanley died. Stan Winston died, and John Candy. That's bad, right? Yeah. Anyway, I'm not even sad when my dad died, because he would be mad at me. He would call me a pussy. <laughs> so, do you think it's weird that Allison Chains kept playing after? No, I saw him after. Yeah, they're good. What do you, think? Did you ever see? You saw him, right? Yeah. Because Jerry was Cantrell great. sound just like Lane Staley. No, really that weird. that new singer. I don't even know. Oh, his I name. saw him with Jerry Cantrell singing. I saw him here with the the other guy. Man, he sounded great. So this is a. Uh, off the movie topic, but uh, I think we've had enough drinks to, to move on. Um, one time I was at this bar in Sherman, in Denison, Texas. Denison, Texas, right on the border. And this guy walks in, and it's open mic night. All the local guitar players are there. Everybody's wanting to play guitar. Fucking Jerry Cantrell walks in. Because he has a like farm in Oklahoma. He came down for open mic night. That's he just badass. goes up there and just starts playing guitar. And like there was like probably, you know, I was in my 20s. And you know, these people something. probably don't even know who and he I'm is. And I'm just like, what the fuck is going on right now? And like we start realizing who, yeah, I mean, we realized who he was and we're just like, what the fuck is it? And dude, he like Please played a couple you, songs. He went up front and we're like, whoa. Right no, we said hi to him. We said hi to him, but like. He pretty much came in, played a couple songs, and just left. That's so crazy. It was fucking weird. It was so weird. And so, like, oh, God, what was that bar called? It was like a biker bar. And uh, and so, like, then I, I hated that fucking bar. And then I started going all the time to open my night. Just in hoping, case Jerry, hoping Cantrell, Jerry would Cantrell would show back up, but he never did. I heard so uh, was, James Hetfield does that, too. Yeah, it was crazy. He'll just show up at a bar and start playing. That's weird. Well, uh, um, yeah, it's just weird whenever famous people do stuff like that. I mean, like actors or whatever, I probably wouldn't be so blown away, but like, um, I feel like with musicians, it's weird. Got Man, I used to have, speaking about Pumpkinhead, Trick or Treat, Trick or Treat with, um, what the hell was his name? Trick or treat, or trick, trick or trick treat. or treat with uh, Ozzy Osbourne yeah. and uh, Gene Simmons. Yeah, I had that movie. Guess what? I lend it out, and that movie's so hard to find now. Never lend your movies out. What was the one with Gene Simmons at the carnival? The carnival. It was like it was a horror type movie. I don't know. Anyone? Anyone in the chat? No. No. Lyric. Lyric. Look it up. Lyric. <sighs> Yeah, it was crazy. What else did I see at the theater? I can't remember. Suspiria, Exorcist. I, I saw so many movies. Dude, I used to go watch the Friday the 13th. I want to just come out and say it. I don't really care for Friday the 13th or Halloween's. Did you like the first Friday the 13th? It was, yeah, it was cool because it wasn't him. You but, had to figure out who the fuck was killing these kids. And then at the very end, he jumps up out of the water. But it's a dream. But then there are bubbles coming out of the water. Oh, so, shit. okay, he dies. Jason dies as a little kid. And then he comes back as an as adult. A giant size fucking adult. With a shitty looking beard all patchy. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't get And it. then in some of them, like, they pull the mask off him. He looks fucking like he's got the downs. Yeah, send all hate mail to you. <laughs> the best Friday the Thirteenth, uh, Jason, is uh, the sack sack head. Head Jason. Friday the Thirteenth Part Two. I think the best Friday the Thirteenth is with uh, Corey Feldman. Dude, Part because Five. He came Final out, chapter. He came out and said Jason molested him, Dude. and not the actor that played Jason, actual Jason. I so, didn't know anything about that. Look it up. I think that was Michael Jason. A.K.A. Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah, that's right. He used to hang around with them. Yeah, and he, he still red dances jacket. like him. <sighs> I don't know. I like Michael Jackson. I wish I hung out with him, and I wish he touched me, just because, so I could see. <laughs> I tried to do it. I couldn't do it. No. Um. So, uh, cheesy horror movies. Not too cheesy, but like you know, not 
serious horror movies. Well, first of all, Friday the 13th. The one with uh, with Corey Feldman. That, Where he that shaves his head. Dude! Oh, holy God. shit. That's what I was just about to say. That is one of the best scenes in any Jason. of the Friday the 13th. Oh, God, where he like shaves oh, his head no. and he's like, Jason! And he makes Jason like go into some like psychosis about his childhood and then chops him. Dude, that is one of the best scenes in any Friday the 13th movie. In my opinion. So, dude. I that, like Friday the 13th you know one. What? Practical. Okay, check it out. Another thing I want to talk about is practical effects. It's so funny when I show somebody a movie with practical effects and they're like, oh, that looks so stupid. I'm like, dude, you don't know. You mean we, versus like CGI. CGI? They think CGI is... I'm like, no. The scene where he hits Jason in the side of the head and he slides down that fucking oh, thing. Oh, yeah, that's fucking awesome. That is awesome. And people are like, that looks like shit. And I'm like... How Somebody can you had think to create that. Like, it's really happening. That shit had to be cast, molded, fucking tube shoved in up in there to make the blood come out. Oh, man. It's a shame. Yeah. People oh, people want to CGI. Yeah. And whole CGI people and CGI fucking lions, like the new Lion King. That movie was shit. I didn't see it. Um, Don't watch so it. So, besides It'll Friday the 13th, child. the first one, which I liked. Friday the Thirteenth, the second one, which as soon as I was, I was like, "Well, this is dumb because he was a little kid. How is he a full grown adult?" But it was good, I thought. And then, <laughs> and then uh, Friday the Thirteenth, Feldman. <laughs> that that was, and then after that, I was kind of like, "Eh, the rest of them are all just kind of whatever." Um, the you know, once it got to like Jason takes Manhattan, he's boxing somebody on once the fucking roof. Once it got roof. to Freddy versus Jason, dude. <sighs> Jason I'm goes sorry. to hell. I'm F like, dude. Just Nightmare stop. on Elm Street is the, the only one, dude. Nightmare on Elm Street. That's the shit, dude. Dude, think about it. It's a fucking guy that fucking pedophilia his fucking kids, <laughs> and then came back. To fucking kill him in their dreams. Just that is a I fucking... I don't think they ever say he's a pedophile. No. Well, in the new one. Did you see the new one? Mm -mm. In the new one, they go to his fucking lair in the school basement. He's a pedo? They fucking open up this thing and they find all these pictures. They don't show them, but they're like, that's you. So it goes deep into that, that he's a fucking psycho killer pedophile. I can handle killers. I can't handle pedophiles. Oh, it's got too deep. So, Lyric said, canceled. That's how everyone here is. I don't understand. It makes me mad. You know, the first movie where I was like, this is fucking terrible on CGI was... Uh, Spawn? No, dude. <laughs> Spawn was fucking that shit. That was bad, but like Malboja was dude, fucking terrible. That was bad, but you know, you know, whenever like it showed, like when he first when he first appears as Spawn, and he's like, "Fuck yeah," because his cape's doing weird shit, and he doesn't know what's going on. That was pretty cool. No, like, it was not for for the time. It looked like fucking it was tumbling cool. salsa. <laughs> Think about it. Chips it was salsa it was fucking work. terrible, dude. At the time, there was there there wasn't that. Okay, it was pretty bad. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> we have that on VHS too. Oh God, please throw it away. <laughs> throw it away now. So, the, the first modern. I thing saw Spawn at the theater. Where where it kind of like upset me, but then I was like, eh, I mean, I guess it's good because this isn't a serious movie. Is the uh, Woody Harrelson and. Uh, uh, oh my god what's it about tequila is my enemy oh, yeah you know zombies rule number one cardio zombie land i zombie love zombie land. land yeah dude awesome movie i don't but like, like i don't the like CGI, how I, the splatter i don't all like the when they fucking, fucking shoot terrible. somebody and the splatter comes at you it's dumb yeah you're right Friday 13 3 3d that was good um so when I was a kid, I, I was like bummed by, I was like, ah, oh, that's so, like all this, every bit of blood is CGI in this. No. And it bummed me out, but I love that movie 
but I don't. I I think like in a real, in a good horror movie, there needs to be um, a good mix. And I think like, I think like Greg Nicotero does like an awesome job of that in Walking Dead. Like as much as Walking Dead is just like a long fucking convoluted story you, about the end of the world. Like there's a lot of really good practical. I'm gonna start effects. watching the rest of that too. There's a lot of really good practical effects with. CGI mixed in to, to supplement. So you know how he became a makeup artist? I don't know. Probably met Tom Savini. So he would he was a fucking teenager and he would go because in Pittsburgh, that's where he lived. Tom Savini was in Pittsburgh and he would do, he had his workshop there. So Greg Nicotero would show up to Tom Savini's fucking workshop and hang out at the fence and every time anybody would come, like, hey, what's up? Is Tom there? And they're like, no, get the fuck out of here, kid. So Tom Savini would see that kid every day hanging out at the fence. And finally he was like, you know what, kid, come in. So they let him in, and he fucking started. He was like 17, 18. So he started letting him watch and learn. And now look where the fuck he is now. Hey, fucking directing. And uh, yeah, and that and... shit's badass. So go out and get it if you Dude, want it. You know what's crazy about Greg Nicotero? Is he just looks like an old like San Francisco hippie now? Yeah, it's crazy. You look at him, and he like. You need to watch. Have you watched do you, any of the history of horror? Yeah, the new one. Have you seen the new? I haven't one? seen the new season. It's good. It's really good. He's on there a lot, and he just he fucking. You can tell he loves his job. That's cool. And just to hang out at the fucking fence, just to be like, hey, come on in. Like that's how you got your fucking career. Because perseverance, just fucking hanging out there, saying, let me in. That's crazy. I love it. I'm gonna start watching Walking Dead again. I need to. I need to. It's on AMC. You know that, right? All of them, even oh, the new no. ones. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's why I got I think AMC. I'm like a season behind. No, they're all on there, and, and the new ones are added every week. So that's cool. That's why I got AMC. Oh, and I was thinking of something when I was young. Do you remember the old movie called The Mask from the '70s? Yeah, with Cher. No, not that one. That was a ter- that was a horror movie too. <laughs> Cancelled. Uh, no, there was an old seventies movie called The Mask, and it was came out in three D, and they were gonna show it on TV. They were gonna show it on TV, and they're like, "Come to the fucking stop and go and get your fucking." Dude, buy a rem- big gulp. I, dude, buy a big gulp and get I, your 3D glasses. I remember when Stop and Go and 7-Eleven used to give out 3D glasses for stuff that was going to be on TV. So that night I have, Dad, please, please, will you fucking, you have to turn the fucking, you remember, it was so shitty. Dad, please, you have to turn it. Please, it's going to come on. You got to line them up the lines. <laughs> turn the fucking color on the goddamn 300-pound fucking box TV. And I would sit there and watch it with my 3D glasses because I was the only fuckhead in my family that wanted to watch it. And I would sit there and act like it was actually 3D, but it wasn't. It was just shit. And my dad would be like, you're a fucking moron. Dude, the only 3D movie that I feel like I've seen in the theaters that was actually really good was... uh, Avatar. Avatar. Yep. After that movie came out, after that movie came out, I was so enthralled with it, and I fucking started a a group called the Avatars because we're fucking retarded for that movie, so we were called the Avatars. Send all hate mail. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't think I was gonna swallow that one. Oh uh, yeah, that was the when he oh. fucking came out of that pot at the beginning and floated across the screen and came out. I was like, "How is this possible? Did you take off your glasses too?" I was like, "What's going on?" And it here? wasn't like the traditional three D glasses, like when you went to see Friday Thirteenth. Fucking hard three. plastic, and it was like, like they had like crazy lines in them. Like, and then it comes in, it's fucking on the. Please return your three D glasses when like, you leave, and I'm like, "Fuck no, no I'm wrong. I had those bitches pocket. for a couple of years." I put mine in the box. But then I was thinking like, Ugh, am I wearing the glass? Do they clean these things? Shit, COVID? That wouldn't fly. No, that would man. Not fly. No, man. I was what like, why I is there fucking... glasses? 
What if I coughed on my glasses and stuck them back in there? I was like, why is there Vaseline Killed on my, my glasses? Grandma. Killed my grandma with those glasses. <laughs> Lyrics in papaya spawn. Did you see that? Did you hear about that? No. You didn't hear about that? No. They're like fucking $50, million, $50 billion movie and he used papaya no. spawn. <laughs> He used a fucking font off of font.com. Dude, that's cool. I'm using Comic Sans oh, for everyone. Oh, my God. You know what other movie I saw in 3D? What? Jaws 3D. I saw that, too. That it was, was terrible. Fucking worst <laughs> fucking movie I've Dude, ever seen in my life. After the first Jaws, they all suck. Like, yeah. I just don't get it. The first Jaws is, is good and scary for what it is i was like uh, i mean i guess i'm still kind of afraid when i go to the ocean and i'm like get where i can't touch the bottom anymore i'm like oh i'm fuck? fucking always terrified when lyric goes i'm going to the beach today and i'm like god damn it lyric fucking jaws no lyric can't go anywhere she gets fucking attacked by animals <laughs> <laughs> i remember when she went to sea camp <laughs> at sea world she goes i want to go to sea camp i'm like all right fucking dolphin bitter no, she fucking texted me the, the same day. Guess what? I'm like, what? A bee stung me. Well, at least it wasn't a, like, ocean bee. And I was like, Lyric, don't go in the ocean. See when she me. went to Hawaii with her mom, I was like, don't fucking get in the ocean, dude. We we went to Hawaii, and uh, there's like a, at the touristy area where you're supposed to go swim <laughs> in Honolulu, there's like a, a kind of wall under the water. So I like cool. maybe like this deep under the water, so you can. It, it's just slow the waves down, so people, families can can whatever, swim around. I you know we we learned that wall was out there. It's like oh cool, let's go out there and like just walk across it. So we're like we're walking across it, and this fucking eel comes up and bites my foot. Like a like moron? out of the, yeah. Dude, those things are fucking terrifying. It, it was tiny, but it still like bit my foot, and then. And then Matt, one of the guys that was with us, like, uh, stepped on a sea urchin and had, like, an urchin thing stuck in his foot. Had to pee on it. Sucked. And then so, I realized that was for jellyfish. So he asked me to pee on it, so I did. One time, me and my friend went out to the jetty walls with my dad. So every time the waves came in, we'd look inside the, between the rocks. When the waves would come in, come in, all these fucking sea urchins would come out. And then as soon as the water went away, whoosh, and I was like, dude, let's go down there and get some. So the wave went out. We went down there. We started fucking trying to get them out. And then the water came in, and we were fucking, <laughs> the water's all around us. And then the water went out. We picked up. We didn't know the shells were razor sharp. Dude, yeah, this thing's like so. We, we fucking put our hands out of the water. The and going everywhere. We're just fucking profusely bleeding everywhere. Dude, the last time we and my dad's all, "What in the hell are you doing? Those things are sharp." So yeah, the I last time we went down there, we're walking away. We're gonna go walk down the beach, and you know, there's like crazy rip tides, and like once you're like Man, fuck on that, that jetty wall, you should not be in that water nope. right next to the like. This dude let his daughter get in that water. And we're like probably a couple hundred feet away. And we start hearing this girl screaming, help, like bloody murder. Help, help. She's in the fucking water getting like sucked all around. And the dad's just like slowly walking over like, get out of there. I'm like, this bitch is about to die. The rib ties, Like dude. I was like, I was feeling sick in my stomach. Like I was like about to start running over there. and And the dad's just like. Didn't care. His daughter's like getting beat against rocks and shit. And I'm like, dude, you're the fucking worst parent ever. It's crazy. It's crazy. Terrible shit. <sighs> we should make a movie about that. Riptide. Riptide. The Riptide's alive. And it kills the certain people. The is full. And the Riptide. Larry said she always swims out as far as she can. It's not that bad at the golf if you're not right next to the jetties. No, it's bad at the golf because if you go under the fucking water's green and you can't Dude, see you anybody. Can't see shit out there. Every time they test that water, it's fifty eight percent. Do you remember sewer. like in the nineties when Galveston they were like 
more medical waste is washed up at Galveston. Needles and Dude, shit. it was like fucking, they are just like showing the beach and it's just like used needles everywhere. I'm like, what the fuck? Who's dumping medical waste in the ocean? Like, where are all these junkies? Are they on the <laughs> beach? <laughs> it's some crazy shit. Junkie beach. So you haven't watched the new season of American Horror Story. I didn't finish it. How far did you get? Did you get to watch the story changed? Because it's basically split into two different stories. Did you start watching the new one? Dude, we watched everything. Uh, did I see the very last one? I didn't see the very last one. Is it about one. aliens? Yes. Is it good? <laughs> okay. The season <laughs> is split into two different stories. It's the first time they've ever done that. I know, it's weird. They have nothing to do with each other whatsoever. The first one goes off the rails at a certain point after about two or three episodes. And you're like, this is so fucking unrealistic and stupid. It's a vampire. Man. And so I was like, yeah, but it got dumb. It got fucking dumb. Yeah, I literally think this is the worst season of American Horror Story ever. <laughs> ever. And then... And I don't know if maybe because they started doing the American Horror Stories that were individual stories, they didn't want to write a whole season, but, like, this shit was garbage. So then it goes into the second season, which is about the aliens. Okay. There's some cool stuff in that one. They do flashbacks to the 50s, and that's pretty cool. Like, uh, that whole 50s, the back past stuff, I like it all. All the new shit, dude... Fucking dumb. It's so dumb. The actress they get to play one of the main characters, her eyes are like this far apart. They're like, <laughs> she's like, you think, you look at her and you're like, man, this girl's beautiful. No, what's wrong with her eyes? Like, and they're like, like, I don't know. I mean, I'm looking at my eyes right now on the monitor and it looks like somebody punched me in both of them. Like, they're real oh, yeah, black you, right you here. Oh, yeah, you have some black it's eyes. It's because of my stress. It's because I'm stressed because you watched this movie. I have to urinate. Movie. I have to urinate, guys. I'm sorry. That's why I'm all fidgety. So Doug is on his own for at least 10 minutes because I'm going to piss for like 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Do you have any more uh, drink? Yeah. Or is it gone? No, there's some more. Hey, I'm already in too deep anyway, so fill me up. I'll be back. Wait, you're going to drink more? Oh, when you come back, you're going to drink more. Right now. Okay. We have a producer here. Do you want any more of this producer? Oh, okay. Uh, let's see what we got going on over here. We got two viewers. That's pretty good. We got like six followers and two viewers. That means that the viewer, the followers did not care when we started streaming okay um what else is going on what is um the on my screen it shows uh there's a timer i think at the bottom and i can't tell what it says it's by how long you've been streaming um but it, it's cut off by the chat because where the chat is sitting co covers it a little bit you want to know how long yeah, I was just kind of wondering. An hour and 43. Oh, okay. 143. Well, that's pretty good. We've got to get to two hours minimum. Two hours. That's what the, the algorithms tell us that we have to do. Otherwise, watch this. He won't know. So what do I talk about whenever Carlos is sitting here? I don't really know. Anything? What do you think? Uh, I'm on the show. Oh, you are on the show now because people can hear you talking. I don't know if... Can people hear you talking? Probably not. Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. Um, so Lyric. It looks like Lyric is in there. She's been pretty active in the chat. Um... Are you going to come on the show with us when you come come back? You're probably there's probably a huge delay here. 
Oh, Carlos is already on the way back. I was enjoying this time alone. Oh, we had DE make a, a purchase. We have, uh, we do have merch available on our, on our, uh, channel store. Um, looks like, uh, looks like someone bought a t-shirt and a mug and a sticker. So that is available if you want it. Designed what, by Carlos. What did I miss? Uh, me just trying to figure out what to talk about while you're gone. I'm no good I on my out, own. I fig figured out what I want to talk about. What? Have you ever been to the Fright Fest in Dallas? Mm -mm. We should go. It's a lot of fun. It's we were going to go last year, but you nearly died. We need to get... Remember we were talking about going, but then you were, like, dying? I don't remember. I Because I was on my deathbed. <laughs> That's funny. I, I, actually, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I went, and, uh... Dude, it's so fun. Especially if you stay in the hotel. Can we get a booth? Can we get a table? And do live know. interviews? Man, that would be so awesome. Fuck. We just need, uh... We just need a GoPro and a hotspot. So I went and saw, fuck. Lyric says she wants to go. Um, Stuart Gordon. Is that the mouse? That little mouse? No. <laughs> the director of uh, Reanimator. Oh, okay. He, I'm so sad when he died. I was so sad when he died. So I go up to his table. I'm waiting in line for like forever. I go up to his table, and he, I have a poster, and he signs it. And I think he signed my bloody best of Fangoria. Jeffrey, Com Jeffrey Combs, right? Yeah. He signed it, too. He was hitting oh, he on was my, there with him? He That's was hitting cool. on my wife. Barbara it was Cramping. so funny. So funny. He kept hitting on her. Well, anyway, Stuart Gordon goes, come on, come on back here. Like, he's at a table like this. Come on back. And there's a chair next to him. He goes, come sit with me. And I was like, for oh, what? Why did you do that? Because he liked my tattoos. That's cool. So I, I go around and I sit and he goes, I'm going to tell you a story. He goes, I wrote this story about a, about a girl with tattoos. She was going to this artist and he would tattoo her and he fell in love with her. And he confessed his love for her. And she, she said, no, I don't want you. So... One night, he got obsessed with her, and he went to her apartment, and he took his tattoos back. And that's, that was the story, and I was like, dude, that is so awesome. Like, it was so cool that he let, invited me to sit next to him. And I was like, and all these people were waiting for him. That's cool. The line was crazy long, waiting for him to sign shit, and I told him, I think I should go. These people were, like, giving me fucking dirty looks. And he was like, oh, who cares? And he just kept talking to me, talk, for a good 15 minutes, he talked to me about different stuff. And I think maybe he was gay and he liked me. I got that vibe, especially when he put his hand on my, my thigh. I'm just playing. <laughs> Send all hate mail. mail. <laughs> but yeah, we should go. They have where you can buy like... We should make a shirt that says send all hate mail to you. <laughs> I met, uh, what's his name from, uh, he was a deputy on Walking Dead, now he's Punisher, and our producer, like, made these too strong, so I can't remember. Yeah. What was his name? Punisher. I'm trying to think of his real name. Well, anyway, he was Mr. Fucking Cool Guy. I mean, he was nice, but again, he hit on my wife, too. What is his name? Producer's supposed to be able to tell us this stuff. I know. Let me see. Let me look it up. There's not supposed to be phones on a show. I don't care, Doug. This is our fucking stuff. show. Lyric, will you tell him? Did you ever see? John Bernthal. Yes. John Bernthal. He was so fucking nice. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> he was so nice, but man... When we walked up to him, he didn't even give me the fucking time of day. 
<laughs> he's always just talking to my wife. Dude, that dude. He's like he's like really uh, into guns, which is cool. But then I think he wears like tight bedazzled jeans, which oh, is not no. cool. Like yeah, well, there, I'm pretty Larry sure. said uh, John Berth. What? Why do you say his last name? Bernthal. 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 There's a yeah. delay. It's about about 15 seconds at least. Is it? Yeah. That's why if we wore headphones, it we would have be to bad. like get a new setup because it yeah, because it's like kind of messed up. Who else did I meet? Jeffrey Combs. That dude, too, man, he hit on my wife, too, but he was cool. He's fucking crazy. That dude's crazy, dude. Like, he's really crazy. I was like, damn, this dude's crazy. I saw Nancy from Nightmare on Elm Street. I got, like, super close to her, like this close, and she told me, I'm sorry, I'm closed already. Get away from me. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, I wanted you to sign my bloody best of Fangoria, because she's on the cover. I, I, uh... The only horror convention that I ever went to was the, uh, the Please one don't Kurt, say the one here. No, no, Kurt Hammett did. Oh, man. And um, it was because I was working there. I worked it, and, and uh, it was cool uh, because... <laughs> they said it feels like 45 minutes. <laughs> it was cool because... Uh, Please uh, send all email to our producer, Jamie. Um, it was cool because... Uh, they needed a place to do interviews and so my office was the only spart part of the building not being used so like um uh like all the interviews were doing in there like so i like got to sit in on the interviews so that was really cool so um was he cool or was he a dick who kirk hammett uh he was cool he was cool um but uh greg nicotero and and did you meet him too yeah, he he did an interview. I've got a picture. I took a picture of him with like with my him and uh, and uh, a couple other people. Um, there were a lot of people there. It was cool. Like it was a big. Kurt Hammett has, I think, the second largest private horror um, <laughs> horror collection. Guillermo del Toro. In in the world, supposedly. So. Um, he has a guy who does all the cure, like who just looks over his house. That's just all his horror stuff. And he has a guy that just like, is kind of like his curator and it's cool. He has a lot of the original Godzilla stuff. Um, he, I mean like he has stuff all the way from back from then. It was all there and they had all the like mock-ups from like walking dead. They had like, you know, some of the original Jason masks were there. Like some, like, I mean, just like, crazy crazy stuff like you know um if you're into horror stuff but uh yeah it was cool do you have his book the book? Kurt Hammett? yeah no i'm not i don't want that why not it has all the stuff yeah it's cool <clears throat> i got to see it in person that's how i go so the only people that i cared about meeting was kane hodder just kidding. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> the only... Damn, you know? I almost walked off set. Yeah, he's gonna like <laughs> take come and punch you. Fucking, take off my fucking mic. <laughs> <laughs> so the only people that I cared about really meeting because they were like, you know, because I was just there was like uh, Greg Nicotero. It was cool to like say hi to him. You know, especially like that was like right in the height of Walking Dead. So it was like really cool. Um, and uh, I met Tom Savini at that convention too. Yeah, he and signed, Tom Savini. He signed my. Uh, I had that creepy doll. Do you remember that creepy doll that I had? That full like weird fucking doll. You don't remember that doll that like they. Oh me yeah, from yeah, California? yeah. So he didn't want to sign it when Tom Savini came into the office. I had it sitting in a chair, and he was doing the interview, and he kept looking over at it. And I actually have a picture of him looking right at it. And he was like, what the fuck's up with that doll? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> like, <laughs> I met that fucking kid from The Walking Dead. And I got him to sign a picture of Chandler. The son? Yeah, Chandler. That dude was just like a robot. He's and I was like... A kid, man. 
He was so little, Has and I was been like, anything else? No, I was like, hey man, can you sign this for my daughter? Right on. Thank you. I was like, you fucking robot. Like I wanted to talk to him, dude. You don't. They don't have time to talk, dude. I mean, you know, it's all cash. Yeah, dude. It's all cash. So the only other person that I I wanted to meet those two, um, and it, you know, just say hi, whatever. Um, but the other person that was there that when I found out he was there, I was like, holy shit! And I went down and like talked to him for a long time. Was the guy that drew Iron Maiden's artwork, dude? That dude was fucking bad. I can't no. remember his name right now. He fucking came to my high school. Really? That was in South Dude, Side. that guy was so cool. So, so I, I love my art teacher in high school. I was like in love with her. She looked like a hippie. She wore like, just like dressed like long sleeve shirts and slacks every day. Didn't nothing spectacular, but she'd always be like, "Man, you you fucking draw awesome." Because I would always draw skulls and shit. I was all fucking. And then on your uh, notebooks. Yeah, my notebooks. I would charge people like a dollar to draw on their <laughs> their butter crust notebooks and turn them inside out. That's what we still do now. And I would, <laughs> yeah, I would fucking draw like Grim Reapers and shit, and I'd be like, "Give me a buck." So they, yeah, it was cool. <laughs> so one day she was like, "Hey, I got a special guest coming into the class," and it was a fucking guy that drew. He brought all his slides Dude. of all the, and he did a slideshow of all the album covers he did and shit. So he was selling some trooper prints, but they were so expensive. I was like, dude, I can't afford this. Like, I cannot. And they stole. Fucking kids stole his slides. No way. And she was so pissed. The next day she was like, I cannot believe you did this. Lyric said, calm down. (laughs) She was like, I can't believe you fucking did this to me. I did this because you guys are all metalheads. I bring him in because he's my friend and y'all steal from him. And I was like, I felt so bad. And then one day I was out in the back waiting for my mom to pick me up because I was a fucking loser, loner. And then this fucking crazy, dirty fucking biker pulled up. Sun-dried fucking skin looked like a leather fucking wallet. He pulls up on his fucking chopper and he has a fucking bandana and he's all like looking at me, he's all... So he's just there revving his engine. And then my art teacher comes out. And gets on the back. And she fucking takes off her fucking long sleeve shirt. And she's covered with tattoos. No way. And she gets on the back and she's like, bye, Carlos. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm in love. Yeah. You try to look her up now. My art. And she's probably like fucking 90. So have her come by and hang. I'm not like telling you to like go hook up with her. (laughs) I'm just saying like. You know, say hey. Is that what's sad up? that Ed said this is me? That's what thought. you like instantly thought. Yeah. Like I'm telling you to go bang your old. No, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't bang her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Know. So I remember that. Yeah. She was. I was like, man, this chick's so fucking cool. My art teacher was a fucking old lady. Like, it was badass, and that's what made me get wanting to get into more into art. That's cool. There was this point when I stopped drawing for like. Probably like 10 years. What? Yeah, I stopped drawing. I was That's too crazy. busy. I was working the fucking, I was working the rat race. So I didn't have time to draw. And then one day I was like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm going to get back into it. And I did. And then you became a tattoo artist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why we're here today. So, what else? You got anything else? Um, yeah, I mean, we talked about all your favorite movies and I only talked about one of mine. Yeah, it's because I didn't watch that movie, so. You, like, dominated the whole, like, favorite movie uh, let's, thing. Let's, let's see, here's some of yours so I can see if I've seen it. <sighs> well, I talked about Pumpkinhead. Um, that's pretty much it. I don't even <laughs> like movies, really. Shit the hell. I know you like Zombie. Zombie? Yeah. Yeah, I I used to really, really love um, the Italian, Italian horror stuff. Uh, I mean, it was just so like crazy and visceral and like I for, mean, for not being in, like American horror movies, like just like from being in the seventies, like of that actually shit, like gross. 
Some of that shit was pretty fucking graphic. The yeah, whole dude. fucking stick in the eye and yeah, man. throwing Not, out guts. Yeah. Like, that shit's I mean, crazy. Tommy's a little, like, it gets a little off the rails when they, like, start walking across the bottom of the ocean and, like, fighting sharks and shit. But other than that, like, there's some, like, really cool stuff. And one thing I never got into that, uh, that I've kind of really started thinking was really cool and, um, and and have watched a couple of things is like the old giallo stuff like the old like you know black gloves and and razor blade stuff like showing the skin rip yeah and like a lot of that a lot of those like early they're they're like half detective movie half horror movie like in a weird way um and and i've watched a couple of them now and and they have like some really good scenes and and I want to watch more of those, but like, uh, it, especially because a lot of those Argento and and uh, and Fulci, like they kind of started out in, in a lot of that stuff, and and you know then went into the zombie stuff. And I I think like they really pushed. I mean, the filming is terrible. The the way they film movies there, like how when Quentin Tarantino is making fun of it in uh, in. Uh, uh once upon a time in hollywood you know he kind of like makes fun of like how they film movies there uh i mean that's really how it is and and it, you know like you can see that they dub shit like it's just so bad like the like some of that stuff's like terrible you know that they do for for english audiences but um but man some of those horror movies were just like crazy pushing the envelope for like the 70s like there was nothing like that in the us really i mean even like super early 70s you know like um you know i guess texas chainsaw massacre here but like the slasher stuff didn't start until the 80s here really you know and and uh, because of those yeah but yeah because of those like they really were just like showing crazy gore stuff and like, like i would love for an american director like edgar wright or re esther to do like a demons remake dude that shit would be badass Demons um, was a shit. And I, I don't. You still haven't. You haven't. Didn't see uh, last night in Soho yet, right? No. They said the last thirty minutes turns into a straight horror movie. I haven't seen it yet. It's only been out what three days now? Three or four days? Yeah, a couple days. Um, Did you watch it, Larry? I, I've, I've heard it's bad, but I don't know. I haven't seen it. But I also feel like it's it, it, at least looking it's at It's probably because people are like, oh, it's nothing like Baby Driver or Shaun of the Dead. Well, the the thing is with, uh, with I think, all his other stuff that's like horror-based or it's, it's like comedy horror. And at least from what I can tell, this looks like it's more like just straight like psychological horror. But I, I don't know. I haven't seen it. I didn't like but, it because I didn't laugh. Uh, yeah that's what they're gonna say that's what i think so but it's like the same thing as you know majestic or myth mythol you know james wan <laughs> malignant malignant <laughs> just like malignant um, you know like we're gonna need to people... talk to we're gonna need to talk to the producer jamie after this Jamie made our drinks too strong. <sighs> oh, I bet that was loud. It was. We have a very professional microphone, so it picks up all the loud stuff. <laughs> oh, man. I think we've been talking for two hours and three minutes and 37 seconds. Yeah. I think, uh... But I don't know. I don't, yeah. I don't even know what else to talk about. I don't either. I fucking exhausted my... And then Jamie and these goddamn drinks. Um, Did I drive here? Yeah. We gotta wait. We gotta break down all these lights because we don't have a full-time studio. This is our actual living room. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta get all this shit out of here tonight. So we'll have time to sober up. Oh man, um, so let's go back to 
I touched on it for a second. Alien versus aliens. You like alien better than aliens? Yeah, because alien is straight fucking horror. Cosmic horror. And what about, if you will, aliens? It's an action movie. Hmm. It is. It's an action movie. Terminator. Horror, sci-fi, action. Action, action sci-fi. It's not a horror. Hmm. Police Academy 3. Shitty comedy. Okay. (laughs) Do you remember, uh, I mean, I love all movies. I know, like, horror movies are, like, kind of my favorite movies. But, like, um, when I was thinking about Police Academy, do you remember a movie that was, uh, it had, uh, Bride of Chucky, Tilly, what's her name? Uh, Jennifer Tilly. Jennifer Tilly in it. Well, it I was remember. About I remember school. shit when I'm drunk. I you don't remember, remember that? shit. Driving, driving school. school. Fuck no. It was a movie about driving school. It wasn't Jennifer Pink Cadillac. Jennifer Tilly was in it. Pink Cadillac with no, Clint Eastwood. Well, that was good. It wasn't License to Drive with Corey Feldman. That was fucking terrible. I love that movie. Dude, that movie was fucking terrible. <laughs> I saw that in the theaters. I think I. I think I. I used to love Corey and Corey. Watched it on uh God, what was that movie called? Oh, so I got a story speaking of that. The Corey from License to Drive. So I think it was one of Bubba's friends. One of Bubba's friends text him and say, Hey dude, do you know anything about movie movie mel- memorabilia? And Bubba's like, I don't know, I can find out. He goes, I found this license on the beach. And Bob was like, who is it? So he sent him a picture. It was fucking Corey's license. What? The real one. He like found Corey it. Feldman's? The, the Corey from License to Drive. Wait, aren't they both in it? Oh, yeah, they are, right? The the one that died recently. The one that died. Corey Haim. Corey Haim. It was Corey Haim's driver's license. He found it on the beach. And he sent Bubba a picture. And he was like, dude, check it out. My friend found it on the beach. And I was like, holy fuck. Tell him I want it. Dude, that's Man, cool. He didn't send it to me. Speaking of uh, Corey Haim, him and Corey Feldman made a lot of movies together, obviously. But one of the movies they did not make together was Silver Bullet, which we just rented and I owe you five dollars for. Silver Bullet's good, but it's not my favorite. But it is good. <sighs> Jamie, did you know who the wolf was? You knew, figured it out before? Yeah, I saw it before. Yeah, we saw it before we just wanted to watch it. The best part of the movie is when he's beating the guy with a bat with his wolf hand. Oh, yeah. To this fog. Yeah. That shit's badass. Yeah. That's like, he's under the fog. Dude. I like the werewolf, though. The yeah, werewolf it was, was cool. cool. They did. Even the transformation stuff was pretty good. Like, I mean, especially, I feel like that probably didn't have a huge budget. Man, I want to recreate that wheelchair go-kart thing. That, uh, Gary Busey. That was pre-fucked up face, right? Yeah, that's before he wrecked his motorcycle. And fucked up his face. He looked like Jason from Friday the 13th Part 2. because he drank and drove or something. I don't know. Lyric asked, how was Wolf of Snow Hollow? Because I just watched. Wait, what does that mean? I watched... Okay, I know there's a delay. The beta but test. I'm going to ask you this, and then I'm going to wait for your response. How, uh, you just watched the beta test. What is the beta test of a movie? Now we wait for 20 minutes. Without saying a word. Oh, anyway, yeah. I liked, uh, Stephen King movies didn't start getting good until after, like, 2015. <laughs> With my favorite drama of all time, Shawshank Redemption. That's good. Oh, man. That is so... That's my favorite drama movie. I can watch that over and over and over. And I read the short story before it ever came out. Yeah. So, Not when a I horror found movie. Out Not a horror movie. At all. But when I found out they were making it, I was so excited. Yeah. But it tanked at the box office because people were like, eh, what's Oh, did shit? it really? Yeah, it tanked, dude. I did tanked. not know that. It didn't even get nominated for Best Picture. I don't think it did. 
Well, anyway, yeah, it tanked. Because people didn't know what the fuck it meant. What the, what's the oh, Shawshank Redemption? Thriller also by the same director. Oh, I just watched The Beta Test. I assume that's the uh, movie, The Beta Test. What is um, The Beta Test, Lyric? That's what he's asking. The, the wo- I, I thought Beta Test of Wolf of Snow Hollow. Wolf of Snow Hollow... Okay, Lyric- Carlos is going to be upset that I say this. No, I'm not. Because he's going to say, you weren't even paying attention. He wasn't. All I heard was, just like you hear here when you're in over here. I'm trying to make money, bro. I'm trying to make money. Looking up fucking conspiracy theories about COVID. I'm looking up prices. Prices. <laughs> sure. Um, the Wolf of Snow Hollow, I feel like the story wasn't that bad, but like, that character and the music was fucking just, I don't know, erratic or something. I don't know. It just, like, I couldn't connect with the character. Like, I feel like he, like, what was wrong with him? He was, like, I was feeling his actual anxiety, which if that was what they were trying to do, That's cool. what, it, yeah, that's Dude, what they were trying to terrible. do. It's fucking terrible. There's no, when you have a protagonist that you're supposed to feel for, but you just hate him, like, there's no point. And I was just like, God, this guy's annoying the shit out of me. Like, perfect. The okay. director said, perfect. Well, that's good, but I will never watch that again. And I definitely won't buy the DVD. You didn't even watch it. I did watch it. I wasn't on the computer, Jamie was. She was, uh. We shared. Okay, so we're in San Antonio. This is something we can't. We're not really supposed to talk about. We've had too many drinks. We share a producer with Joe Rogan. His name is Jamie. Oh, shit. Yeah, we're not supposed to talk about that. We might have to figure out how to edit that out. Yeah, oh, fuck it. Maybe Joe Rogan will be like, hey, guys, you want to come on my show? Maybe Jamie. Jamie can talk about us up. Making a COVID horror movie. Maybe. Dude, court. Yeah. The director said perfect because he was the du- the director said perfect because he was the director. The actor or the director? The thriller by the same actor. Director. Is uh, director Jamie said, giving you drinks too, Lyric? The director, you sound you sounded fucked up, the bro. The director said perfect. The actor, the, director? the actor was the director. With that actor, that fucking that shit fucked. I was just like, dude, I don't like this guy. Spit it out, Doug. I don't like this guy. That's how I felt. I was like, I don't I like him. this guy. I liked him. The story overall, I liked. I did not like. No, you can't say that. You hated the fucking whole thing. You can't say that. No, I hated the whole thing. You're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I did not don't like lie. it. I will you not watch lie. it again. You don't got to lie to us, bro. Oh, I'm seeing, bro. Jamie done fucked me up. No. Oh, we're out. I'm good. It's empty. I'm good. No more drinks. Damn. I gotta get up at 2 p.m. Oh, I was about to say, what? Tomorrow's Monday. We don't work oh. on Mondays. Yeah, we, we have to go pick up the ruckus. What? Oh, are we going to pick that up tomorrow? Yeah. He said, he said, we need to drain the gas. has a brand new battery. We just need to charge it and put new gas in it. And it's Do you ready. have a charger? No. Can we start it with the truck? Hook it up jumper cables? It might need to be trickle charged. Yeah, probably. But if the gas needs to be drained, that's a kind of a problem. No, it's not. There's a fucking hose. You just unplug it. Yeah, where do you put it? Ocean? One of those no, things that say drains to the ocean? Didn't you see Christmas Vacation? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was then. sewage. Same thing. You find one of those things that say drains to ocean and put it in there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. That's what I thought. I don't know. I didn't see the two exclamation points on lyrics. The director. Huh? Lyric said, The director said perfect because he was a director. I don't even know what that what means. The, I, I don't, don't know. know yeah. Because I had too saying. much a drink. No, Lyric is. The mean, director said perfect because he was the director. Because Lyric's drinking the same. Is this a car show now? Ooh. I don't know what that means either. Because we're talking about the ruckus. Oh. <laughs> Dude, I used to love listening to AM radio, and they're like, Okay, we got a uh, 1942 uh, Crown Victoria. And I'm like, 
They're just like talking about cars that they're selling on the radio. It doesn't even make sense. It's weird. Pre-internet. Oh, man. I don't know. I feel like maybe we should sign off now. Yeah. I think, uh... Yeah. A little bit too many drinks. Join us, uh, next week when we talk about vampire movies. Yeah, we'll be back, um, next Sunday with... A drink that Carlos likes, so maybe he'll drink it. I didn't even taste these anymore, so I guess I like it. And uh, then the last we'll, duel. What is the last duel? The one with the Benefer and what's his name? Wait, Benefer's two people. Yeah. Is it Ben or if it or is it Jen or is it both? The accountant. Matt Ben. Is it the accountant or is it Angel? The Matt Angel. Ben. It's with Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. Not before he finishes his drink. Ah, shit. Oh, speaking of Angel. Lyrics is out there. I was thinking of Angel Eyes. You know, Jennifer Lopez's only good movie. Not Selena. Um, Angel, uh, me and Emily have been watching Angel and Buffy lately. Joss Whedon. I don't know. I heard he... But fucked everybody on the set. Dude, there's some bad shit. Like, people are like, this, like, it seems like he is, like, an asshole. Yeah, it's at first crazy. I was like, leave him alone. Now, so many people are saying shit. Dude. I'm like, this dude's a dick. Yeah, it seems like he's, like, an angry director. I mean, he is losing his hair. Yeah, but that was, like, 20 years ago. Yeah, but still, like, shave the fucking thing already. Well, no, no, I mean... The movie was the show was twenty oh, years you ago. Mean he was losing. He his was hair. still angry. He I was, was like, still he angry. was losing his hair twenty years ago. I'm like, we'll shave the motherfucker. Yeah, he seems like a fucking cocksucker. Wow, wow. Sorry. Well, at least I, I guess we'll him. never have him on the show. Yeah, he can come on the show anytime he fucking wants. Explain yourself, Josh Wheaton. Joss Wheaton. Jody Comer, Matt, and Ben, Adam Driver. Adam Driver. Adam Driver. He was a Jedi in that last... Adam Driver. In that last Star Trek movie. Right? Yeah, I saw him in a movie about divorce. You saw that movie? Fuck yeah, it was a great movie. You're lying. Dude, that was a good Can I verify movie. it? Can I verify this with Jamie? It's, yeah, it's true. It's a good movie. Like he, It's like fucking dramatic and crazy as shit, but it's like a good... like. Movie that I would never watch, usually. It's so, a good. It's a good movie. So there's this new movie that just came out. It's for rent. I think good it's for soup. rent on Amazon. The Deep House. Is where, that like where it's a found footage, and they go this? Oh, couple, I thought you were talking about like good, good soup. I thought you were talking about like that type of music. <laughs> Deep House music. <laughs> no, this couple <laughs> goes to this lake in a different country because there's deep in the under the water there's a full oh, house yeah that shit looks fucking creepy and they go down there haunted house and underwater a haunted house underwater it's combining one of my favorite things with one of my least favorite things i hate fucking underwater movies really you didn't like fucking uh deep rising what's that oh my god again I which one it. is that just no, I mean I've probably seen it. Which one is it? Uh producer, can you uh look up actor on that? Oh my god. Look. No, it's fucking great. Where they're trying so these people hire this boat for hire. It's like an armored boat with gun turrets to go rob this new cruise line that's only catering to millionaires. So they Treat Williams. Treat Williams. Oh, Treat Williams. Yeah. So I they love go. Treat Williams. Treat Williams is the main actor. They go out there. They get on this fucking luxury boat. They climb up there with their hooks. They go inside. Everybody's gone. So like ghost ship. Everybody's gone. There's fucking nobody there. They're like, what the fuck's going on? All the money's still there. They think somebody already robbed it. But there's a creature on board, dude. That movie's so fucking good. That's not an underwater movie. That's a boat movie. It is an underwater movie because at the beginning they show it coming up from the deep. I'm talking about like Deep Six, 
Fuck deep uh, six. Fucking that one where they have to breathe water, but then there's aliens under the water. You know, they have to. The abyss. The abyss. But you gotta say it like, what's his name from uh, from Pirates of the Caribbean? Casey Giant Jones. Depp. Casey Jones's locker. What's his name? I don't know. Davy Jones. Davy Jones. Where he goes, the abyss. <laughs> That's his best part of the all the series. <laughs> Look it up. What else? Well, anyway, we need to. I lent that one out to you. Son of a bitch. You have like more movies than anyone I know. Like you own more, and you've probably lost more than that. Yeah. By lending them out. Deep to Rising people. is my favorite underwater horror movie. You just said it's it just, wasn't underwater. It is underwater because it's deep rising. It's coming from the deep to the surface. I think every episode is, we should fucking start look, fighting. Look, and then make the camera fall. Look, if if it was underwater, we'd be we underwater. Back, you said bruises. it wasn't. Ariel, once she has her legs, is no longer longer underwater. Who's Ariel? Are you kidding me? I know in Ariel they used to work at Whataburger. Oh my God. And every time I'd buy Whataburger. Once you're above water, you're above water. She was like, "What's up, bro?" Deep rising, they rose. And I'd be like, "Oh, you know my usual." Oh my God. You know Ariel from the Princess Diaries. <clears throat> I fucking she love the loves Princess like Diaries. She... I love the Princess Diaries. <laughs> Please send all hate mail. That's a new shirt. Send, I'm gonna... send reviews at Gmail. <sighs> all right. Let me drink this and we're going to sign off because the lyrics said not to sign off until. <sighs> oh my God. You don't have to do it. You can pull Can't it out. down. Lyric's making me proud. And all she asked me is to drink the rest of this fucking drink. I'm oh, going to do it. Cool. It's just margarita. I'm sorry. You <laughs> Dude. Ooh. You know what I have noticed? This will be the last thing I talk about. I swear. Then we can go. Is the incredible amount of movies that I've seen lately that someone vomits in. I don't know why. Why are these fucking people putting vomit in their movies? I felt like that all day today. Vomitus. Vomitos. That should be a that should be a Harry Potter. Vomitos and people <laughs> vomit. Oh, wouldn't that be good? You know where I got that from? What? Bubba started a band, and it was called Vomitos. He was a drummer. That's disturbing. They never made a single fucking song. They that's made shirts that, and everything. That's how most bands go. <laughs> <sighs> okay well thank you good night i guess we're gonna go um we will back be back sunday. we'll be back next sunday at eight o'clock talking about gay vampire movies aka the hunger hmm. david bowie look it up i had that one too but it's gone oh my god he's lost everything yeah um yeah, I think we're good to go. And uh, we will see you guys next week. Check out our merch. And uh, that's it. Please buy something. I need to buy cat food. Thank you. Good night.